Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to Sewing Street. How are you doing? Stuart Hillard here with you all morning with fantastic guests and some wonderful, wonderful fabrics and projects to really brighten up your day. It's all about rainbows this morning for the first hour, but we'll get to that in a sec. You know it's my favourite colour. I uh, hope you're doing well today. It is light outside and bright. It's quite, it's almost sunny. No, it's not really sunny, but it's not raining. I'll settle for that. I'll settle for not raining. You never know, we might see a little rainbow in the sky. You'll certainly see plenty in the studio today. Now we'll start with our early bird. There it is. There's our beautiful early bird special. Uh, $6.99 for the Lewis and Irene over the rainbow multi fabric. Now until midnight tonight, you won't be paying $6.99. The price is crashing. You know that's what we do with our early bird. And it's crashing to $4.99. Wow, that's fantastic. Let me show you this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. It's so what we call a double wide border and um, what you've got there is the same border print reflected uh, on either side of the fabric. So what this means is, I mean absolutely fantastic if you wanted to make something like a tote bag, okay, you could easily do front and back of the bag for your tote bag and then I would just pick a coordinating solid or, or one of the other rainbow fabrics that we've got on the show actually to create the lining so that would look terrific but also a um, bit different uh, to our normal early bird special is the fact that you can actually multiply on this and get a continuous length 
So for example, if you wanted to use this for the border of a quilt, I mean, imagine that going all the way round a quilt, that would be absolutely incredible, wouldn't it? It's about 20 inches wide, or even um, use this for big blocks in a quilt and then combine that with some piecing. Now, I, I think in fairness, I would expect to pay 4 99 or even more if this was a panel. This could be a cushion front panel or something like that. And I think 4 99 would be a bit of a bargain for that. But actually you're getting the double image. So you're getting that right across the width of the fabric. And of course that makes it perfect for using things like borders because the design, the border then is going to be on the lengthwise grain, which is more stable than crosswise. Now this would also be brilliant for a book pillow, a reading cushion. Um, you can check out my tutorial on my YouTube channel, but this would make a great reading pillow or indeed just a couple of really lovely big throw cushions, um, either with or without a border. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's from Lewis and Irene, so we know the quality is going to be absolutely brilliant. It's also a great opportunity, I think, for some embellishments. You could stretch this over an artist's frame and just have it on the wall. But you could also add some embroidery. So for example, you could do things like add some little gemstones or some sequins to pick out some of the stars. You could add some embroidery stitches in the rainbow. You could also add some extra applique to this, couldn't you? Um, so, or some embroidered details, maybe where's the, there's a little bit of a yellow brick road there, I think. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. We need Dorothy, we need Toto. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, Hannah, our producer, just sang If I Only Had a Brain, and I've never thought it was more appropriate. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. She does have a brain. <laughs> that for me ding dong the witch is dead <laughs> ah. <laughs> absolutely lovely though the colors are so bright and zingy they really are it would also be a great um panel actually to make a, a pump bag shoe bag or a pajama bag so imagine that gathered at the top there like that as a pump bag or pajama bag washing bag laundry bag I want to encourage someone in the family to tidy up, pick their things up off the floor. Most of you are multi-buying. Remember that if you were to buy three of these, you're going to get a metre and a half of fabric for less than £15. Incredible value. Absolutely incredible value. What about making things like iPad stands, book covers? I mean, individually, if I fold this down a little bit so you can see the kind of images you might get. I mean, that's about A4 size. Still looks terrific, doesn't it? There's plenty going on there. But equally, plenty going on there. And actually, I wouldn't object to having that in my stash for a little project. I would definitely find uses for that. But equally, you know, if you wanted to make something like, what about, what about a sleep mask? A little lampshade, maybe? A little uh, book, a box cover, rather? That would be cute. I mean, loads of different stuff you could do with this. And remember, of course, the bit that I'm showing you there is actually only half of the panel. You're getting that twice. Absolutely fantastic value. Really cool that. Love it. Lewis and Irene over the rainbow. Rainbow fabric. You know, I think so. I mean, I'm really keen on border prints. I've always loved them for the possibilities that they give, but they can get a little bit left behind and forgotten because they are so big. But I mean, absolutely brilliant for cushions, tote bags, a messenger bag. I mean, hello. What about that on a messenger bag? I mean, it's just glorious. Little curved corners.
Hannah's going to embroider her cyclist neighbour coming through the hills. I think that sounds quite cute. <laughs> really nice though, isn't it? And you could easily add some personalisation to this as well. I think this space down here, if you wanted to put something like, you know, Maya's, Maya's cushion or Maya's bag, something like that, or, you know, Oliver's book pillow, you could embroider, you could applique. Hannah rules. Stuart's pillow, keep off. <laughs> but also as well of course this would make a really nice you could also make a really nice um, table runner just out of half a meter actually so again leave it as a whole piece of fabric okay and then layer it quilt it bind it that's all you've got to do I mean absolutely brilliant for things like birthday party once you've all checked out we'll have less than 20 meters left which sounds like a lot it's going to go in a moment uh, really sweet this <laughs> love anything with a rainbow on it and that is really really beautifully done now if you've already checked out congratulations you've got your rainbow panel you've got your early bird special and you've also paid your PMP which means that for the rest of the day you won't pay another penny in postage and packing no matter what you buy from a fat quarter or a reel of thread right through to our biggest, heaviest sewing machine, 1P and P. Uh, lovely message this morning from, oh, come on, commit, commit from Anne. I'd use it to add to the rainbow tote bag and make a second version with this as the pocket. That's a fantastic idea. We've actually got my rainbow tote bag panel on the show today and I totally agree, this would be brilliant. You could, uh, you could turn this into the pockets so either, I'm just going to fold the top down slightly more than that, just like something like that. So have that, yeah, so that over a tote bag. So these are our pockets. Wouldn't that be sweet as an apron too? Oh, hello. Cupcakes, anyone? Glorious! we just spend the whole hour just playing with this piece of fabric I've got scissors I've got needle and thread no no because we need to do the menu okay so 8 a.m. it's Stuart's rainbow selection you know it's my favorite color then at 9 a.m. I'm joined by the wonderful Cara Ackerman with the November cat of the month there's our projects it's the gorgeous Bengal the turn of the Bengal. If you've got a Bengal cat, do send a photo in. We love to see your pets. And you know I'm a cat person. Gorgeous, that love it teamed with the denim. So we've got a couple of really nice projects lined up for the 9 a.m. hour with Cara. Then at 10 o'clock, we've got cork and bag making fabrics. We've got loads of lovely corks. We've got some PUs. Um, really really good selection there and also some great books on bag making so if you enjoy your bag making stick around for that at 11 we're doing Sashiko with Cara Ackerman beautiful coasters and look at that cushion absolutely beautiful really classy that's something to treasure and you can also make some beautiful little coasters we've got some great little printed uh, fabric packs great range of Sashiko threads and needles Car is going to be showing us how accessible Sashiko is at 11 o'clock. And then at 12, it's sewing machines and tools. Really important hour, that. Great opportunity to have a look and see the latest sewing machines and also some really useful tools that are great for you, but also great if you're thinking about buying a sewing machine or some tools for someone special this Christmas. So stick around with us. Now then, how do you watch? Let's have a look. Let's see. Well, here's the website. This is what you do. Click on Watch Live. That's www.sewingstreet.com, of course. And then once you've clicked on Watch Live, um, you can message the studio. Look there in the right-hand corner. You can send us a little message. Hello. I love rainbows. And then as you scroll down, you'll see the early bird on the left and on the right, our bestseller, which, of course, at the moment is that rainbow panel. Now then, looking down, it will become two columns. 
you've got show deals on the left and then pre-order on the right. Now if you're getting Cat of the Month, I would jump ahead and pre-order to make sure you've got your Cat of the Month, that gorgeous Bengal, and then look at all these lovely fabrics coming up. We've got beautiful rainbow fabrics, my rainbow tote panel. There's the November Cat of the Month panel, the Bengal. We've also got it in bundles with instructions to make either a tote bag or the book cover. Oh, yes, hmm, that should be a book cover there, but anyway, you get the gist, you know what we're like. And then some really useful tools, then look at this lovely cork, uh, printed with gold, silver, or uh, plain. Some really nice kits as well. And then we've got some vinyl and PU, uh, really, really lovely that. Got some that's brand new, some pre-quilted fabric as well. Always looks really smart for bags. Some great books there as well. Then, look, there's Cara's wonderful uh, Sashiko panels pre-printed. So you can jump straight to the sewing. We are going to crash those prices, by the way. So stick around for that. Sashiko panels on their own, of course. And then those wonderful sewing machines. We're going to have a real good look at the 450, the 720, the 580, all from Elner, a brand we know and love. Some great sewing bags there as well, sewing machine bags. Now, a few of you asked for the sewing machine with the scissors back in stock. Well, there it is. Brilliant price, that $15.99. And it's a superb bag for die cutting machines, actually. Overlockers, there's an awful lot you could get in there, or even your fabric storage. And then we've got some really beautiful fabrics. I've got them right here, actually. I'll be showing you them in just a second. So in this hour, we're going to be having a look at gorgeous rainbow fabrics. Now then, we'll start with the most amazing, the most amazing thread selection. Now, I doubt very much if we'll ever get this back in stock. We are down to the last couple. <coughs> this is from Patrick Lowe's. Now, if you've been quilting for a while, or even if you haven't, I'm sure you'll be aware of Moda Marbles, a wonderful range of blender fabrics. Well, originally, Patrick Lowe's was the designer, and he is an amazing, amazing fabric and quilt designer who really specialises in gorgeous, clear, your colours and that's what you've got in this box of Aurifil threads. It is absolutely sumptuous. Now you've got 100% Aurifil cotton there, you've got 45 spools and each spool has got 220 yards on it so they're big spools really and it's a 50 weight so perfect for in particular quilting, applique, top stitching. You could use them for piecing but to be honest with you, they're a bit, they're a bit good to have on the inside, uh, put them on the outside, quilting, applique, machine embroidery as well would be wonderful. Uh, just the most beautiful range of colours. Uh, I love a rainbow. Uh, this pleases me enormously, just the way they're packaged. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. And it comes in this wonderful, really high quality box. In total, you're getting 9,000 metres of thread in that selection. And we really don't have anything else like this at all. They're Patrick Lowe's Essentials. And of course, you know, I mean, whether you like Patrick's quilt designs or fabrics or not, I mean, the thread is absolutely beautiful. It's the same Aurifil thread quality that we know and love. You're getting 45 reels and it really does go right through the rainbow. We've got some beautiful browns and chestnuts, oranges and tans, and then through into this wonderful selection of blues, purples, turquoise and teal, a whole range of greens, which is absolutely lovely, yellows, oranges, reds, and through into a couple of pinks as well. Um, of course, those threads are going to blend beautifully. So for example, you know, this turquoise here is going to blend with a whole variety of fabrics in those tones. So the best way to test a thread to see whether it's suitable, whether it looks right on your thread, is definitely not to hold the reel of thread up against your fabric. 
but rather undo a little bit of the thread and lay it on top of your fabric and then step back and have a look. And then you'll be able to see much better whether it blends, whether it pops, um, whether it's just sort of somewhere in between, whatever look you're going for, but you're going to find a colour to suit every project in this amazing selection. Just gorgeous that. And there's your little key at the top to all of the different colours if you want to replace them. And there's the man himself, Patrick. Just brilliant. Google him or have a look on Instagram. He does the most wonderful stuff. Now, I do just want to let you know we have only got two of those left. So, if the rainbow's your thing, be quick. Now then, Let's have a little look at my rainbow tote bag panel. Um, I've got a couple of the, uh, one here of course, and then I've also got one here which I'm in the process of finishing off. Um, so this is the other side of the tote panel. This is my first panel that I designed. Uh, it's just, it's brand new really, just a few weeks ago launched. I've not quite finished this. I'm gonna finish this in the show. Been very, very popular already on pre-order this. You've got two massive pockets one really big pocket at the front which has got the um, socialite wreath on and then on the other side you've got the socialite sewing machine and flower wreath and it's all on top of this gorgeous rainbow um, you could of course divide this pocket up the center if you wanted to by stitching but i haven't um, and on the panel let me show you the panel itself you get everything for the rainbow tote itself, plus the pockets front and back. Then you also get your shoulder straps and your linings for your straps. It's a big panel, <laughs> really big panel. Um, you also get your bias binding for the curves on the pockets. You get some extra tabs as well. If you wanted to add D-rings or rectangular rings, you can do so with these um, tabs here. We've also included some key fobs or bag charms if you want to make those up. There's a big piece of rainbow reels extra fabric there which you could use for a pocket. I've added a pocket to, to mine. And then you've also got some big triangles of fabric here and here which are also some extras as well. So there's tons of value. You want to add in a metre of a solid of your choice as the lining for both the pockets and the main bag itself. I've used this really gorgeous magenta here and I just want to show you, I'm going to finish off sewing the bag up actually while, while we're on hour. We don't often get to the actual lining and certainly when John and I were together we didn't. But I'll just turn the lining through and what I've done is I've used a bit of that um, Rainbow Reels fabric to make a floating pocket for inside. So I've divided this up into two. Um, a floating pocket's really good to put inside a bag actually and floating simply means that rather than sitting in the bottom seam or in a seam it floats above that so it's much easier to get things like keys purse wallet you know anything like that uh, from from a floating pocket so they are useful and you can make that using your panel i love to do a little bit of sewing when i can now if you wanted to watch that show back and watch the making of the main bag. It was the 16th of October, 16th of October. So you can watch uh, that. The year is flying by so quickly, isn't it? It really is, it's frightening. Um, the bag is made really simply. It's a front and back panel uh, once you've put the pockets on and then we box the corners. And I'll just show you if you've never boxed corners before what that means. Um, the panel itself has the corners cut out already and that's my preferred method so when you come to cut your lining which you'll do with your own fabric um, just use the front and back rainbow panels as your pattern and then cut out those squares and then what you're going to do is pop your hand inside your lining until your fingers kind of poke through that gap and then bring those edges together now you want to push your seam allowances in opposite directions just licking the fingers there so I've got a bit more grip so push your seam allowance in opposite directions just like that and then I'm going to pop a pin through to hold it in place 
I tend not to press my seam allowances as I'm going often in bag making until I've got to this sort of stage so that I can push my seam allowance whichever way I want to go. And you'll see that once we push that that way and um, line up our seam allowances, we actually end up with a, a flat seam to sew across a boxed bottom. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're just boxing that bottom of the bag. It gives a bit of uh, depth to the bag and provides us with a bit of a base. I'm just going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here or thereabouts. And sew across. I'm using the Elner Experience 560 at the moment, which is a brilliant sort of more, much more budget friendly machine, but still has a thread cutter. Love that. Absolutely love that it has that thread cutter. It's one of those features that once you start using it and it doesn't appear on a machine, you think, oh, I'm not sure I really like that. Right, so now you can see we've now got a base and, and kind of sides to our bag. And then to put the bag together itself, you've got your outer bag right sides out, your lining wrong sides out, and you're going to put the main bag inside the lining and then match up around the tops. Now don't forget we've got all kinds of different rainbow fabrics on the show today, uh, not just the rainbow panel, but we've also got loads of lovely fabrics that would do really well actually as linings for this bag. If you wanted a, a more special lining, even more rainbow. Now the early bird is about to sell out, so well done if you got that. If you've still got it in your basket and you haven't checked out, you might just be very quick. This is your last chance actually to um, check out. Now when you are making up a bag or anything really, I always like to match up the important bits and obviously the side seams are a really obvious place that you would want to match up. Then I will match up the centre and then if the wind's blowing in the right direction, the rest of the bag should just line up. If everything's been pieced and cut nice and accurately, then it should just line up. You shouldn't need to tug and pull. I always think if you have to tug and pull a lot, then it's a bit of an indication that maybe your piecing is not so accurate or you're cutting maybe. But that's a nice, easy job. Handles, of course, are pointing downwards and inside the bag. That was something I had to get my head around when I made my first bag. Really couldn't understand why something that was sticking up had to be hanging down. Anyway, good lesson to learn in life, that really, isn't it? Let's be honest. Now then, I've grabbed my sewing machine and I've taken the accessory box off, exposing the free arm on the machine which now allows me to slide the bag onto the bed of the sewing machine. So I'm going to drop my needle down. And now I'm just going to sew all the way around the top. Just grab my pin box. And of course, don't forget, take your pins out as you get to them. You could use clips, of course, if you prefer wonder clips, but I've used um, Vlieseline H640 for this bag. So it doesn't have particular bulk in it. Um, pins will go through perfectly well. There we go just whizzing around the top. Just as you go when you're sewing around the top of a bag, just make sure that you stop every few centimetres really, just to rearrange and reposition. You don't want your bag to get caught up under the sewing machine and start making life difficult for you. There we go, nearly there. Ah, Susie Duncan has been has just messaged in to say it's nice and sunny where she is at the moment. Where is Susie Duncan at the moment? 
Where is she? Greece? Turkey? Uh, somewhere lovely. It's not particularly bright and sunny here, but the sun, you know, is struggling to get out. What I'm finding very difficult at the moment, I don't know about you, is just adjusting to it being pitch black at five o'clock. That is not a good look. Um, yeah, struggling a little bit with that. It's when I start looking at holiday brochures. Right, there we go. Oh, sorry about, oh, oh, excuse me. I say, one of our directors, Elliot's just come in with my lovely cup of tea and sporting a very nice new haircut. Is that a little bit of a fade there? Come on, no, bring it right over. Come on, there he is, look at that fade. Look at that. I've, I've also got a fade. Mine's kind of like a reverse fade, isn't it? The hair starts <laughs> here and then fades. Thanks, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So there's my lining, all stitched in. The only other thing you've got to do, of course, is just to bring that raw edge together along the bottom, that gap that you left in your lining. You can bob a pin in and then just will whiz across there on the sewing machine. And you could also, of course, top stitch around the top of your bag as well, just to hold the lining down and it smartens things up. Um, but I'm not going to do that now because otherwise I'll just carry on sewing for the rest of the day and I won't actually show you anything else. But there we are, lining down into the bag and we're basically done. If you wanted to, you could leave just a little lip of your lining showing at the top, top stitch around it and then you've got a faux binding. And there we go, that's my rainbow tote bag. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> Do remember to check out, because um, we have got dwindling stocks. So be quick. Oh, now, is that the iPad? Thank you very much. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, some nice messages. Lulu says, morning, I'm on my holidays. Haysborough in Norfolk. See, you're not going to catch me out there. It's spelled H-A-P-P-I-S-B-U-R-G-H, Happisburg. But I lived in Norfolk and I know it's pronounced Haysborough. That's just to check whether you're a local or not. Um, Susie's uh, emailed in. Susie Duncan says, I'm at home in rugby preparing for Thursday's shows. Morning, Stuart and team from Anne. Good morning from Margaret. Morag says, morning, howling a gale here in Dumfries, sitting on my bed, waiting on the carpet fitter. Could be a long day. Oh, yes, but it's going to be lovely and it's going to smell lovely because there's nothing nicer, is there? New car, new carpet smell. It's absolutely gorgeous. Sorry, I probably did look more delighted by the smell of new carpet than I should. But I, well, I'm quite, I'm a sensual, sensory person and I love nice smells. So things like new carpet just is gorgeous, isn't it? I love the smell of a fabric shop or a bookshop. Mmm, you know, yeah. I like when you walk into a, into a swimming pool, swimming baths, and that sort of slight tang of chlorine. I like that, yeah? Ooh, I'm not, I mean, Hannah's just given a top tip for making your <laughs> suitcase smell nice when you bring your dirty laundry, that coffee beans, coffee beans make your bag smell nice. Anyway, uh, Donna says, Haysborough's not far from me, ha ha. Uh, Carol says, good morning all, thank you, Carol. Susie says, loving the tote bag, Stuart, thank you very much. Um, oh, Viv says, morning Stuart, you could trapunto the rainbow. That's on our early bird special. That's a lovely idea. And a border for nursery or playroom curtains. Thanks, Susie. That's a brilliant idea. Claire says, good morning Stuart and all. Ah, oh, wonderful start to the day. See, rainbows. Every day should start with a rainbow. Just saying. Now, 
let's have a look at more rainbow fabric because we've got so many lovely things. This one here. Mmm, this is absolutely delightful. Now this is a gorgeous one. This is very, this reminds me of maybe, why does this remind me of Crystal Tips and Alistair? Do you remember Crystal Tips and Alistair? No, you're too young, aren't you? Ah, this is also from Lewis and Irene, from the same Over the Rainbow collection. So this would work beautifully if you got the early bird special. This is $6.99 for half a metre, and of course you can multi-buy and get continuous length. I mean, this would work so beautifully with something like a light sky blue. Let me just show you how, I'll just bring in my rainbow tote for a second, how well that works with this sky blue pin dot. But a sky blue solid as well would look really nice for piecing together. You could do a lovely f nine patch or a disappearing nine patch, nine patch pizzazz, amazing. So lovely. And, um, it's got a bit of a 70s vibe to it as well, I feel. The little stars, just pretty, really pretty. So that's that one. And then is it this one here. Ah, this one here. So this is the same design, but with a more of a blue background. How lovely is that? I do think that would be lovely for bag making, for lining bags, something a bit special inside. It'd be great, of course, for quilts, cushions. And you've got, I mean, it reads fairly nice and even, doesn't it? Because it's sort of a good all over print. So even if you cut that up really small, you're still going to get detail. English paper piecing with solids, that would be nice. Now this is a blue tone, but it's a kind of the purple end of blue, if you know what I mean. It's that purplish blue. Um, very, very pretty. Really cute. It's a different interpretation of rainbow, isn't it? Rather than just having one. Almost like feathers. It's almost got a feather look to it. Uh, nice message from Mary Ann in An County Antrim. Lovely to see you, Stuart. Good morning to all at Sewing Street. Mary Ann. Thanks, Mary Ann. It's lovely to have you company with us. We'd be lost without you. Now, this is gorgeous. Can I do this one next? This appeals to me very much on the colour scheme. Uh, this has got that same sort of purplish blue background. This is absolutely glorious. Look at that. And the way the colours really jump out, they really pop. Um, they're not neon, but they have that sort of almost neon look, I think, because of the purple blue background. Beautiful. What about a lovely rucksack or a backpack? What about lunch bags for school or college or work? Um, Adele says, Morning Street Team, what lovely fabric. It reminds me of fish scales and would be perfect for anything mermaid related. Oh, Adele, I'm totally with you on that. That's these ones here. Absolutely. What about your swim bag? What about makeup bags? Just lovely. Make something for the little mermaid in your life. Really lovely. They're gorgeous, aren't they? So happy. That would be lovely as a border on a quilt. You could also cut alternate blocks. I mean, if I show you what um, sort of approximately an eight inch square would look like, cut from that, that's about an eight inch square. So you've got lots of nice stuff going on, haven't you? That could be um, an alternate block with set with star blocks, simple sawtooth star blocks would look gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. You don't have to do anything really complicated with fabric like that. Just let it shine, let it sing. A rail fence quilt would be fun too. Great for nursery children, but also really lovely for adults. A shirt, a pair of pajama bottoms. Oh, and then, and then you could have different colored t-shirts to go with, couldn't you? I get about a week's wear out of a pair of pajama bottoms. Probably oversharing there. But then a different t-shirt. 
don't know why my hand went there. A different, a different T-shirt. I'm going to put my hands down now. Honestly. Right, that's that one. And then this is also very beautiful. Same design, but with a sky blue background. And then the rainbow has been kind of reinterpreted. And I don't know why, but this kind of makes me think of the Olympics. The colours of the rings. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, but six ninety nine for a half meter is cracking value. Remember, you can multi buy this. Really, really super duper. Good for kids, isn't it? It's lovely for children, but it's not super super. The kind of ba it's not babyish. I like. I even like the little colour registration marks along the edge, which are also little rainbows. Look at those. Lots of people save self edges, don't they, and make them into things. Hmm, really cute. So that's our rainbow. That's over the rainbow from Lewis and Irene. Very nice. Oh yes, these are gorgeous. Is this a Tula pink? Ah, same range. But if you love Tula pink, this would go so, so well with line work. That's gorgeous, isn't it? This has been very popular on pre-order. Have a look at that. So this is a great blender, a background print that isn't just plain white, plain cream. This would also work really well with Alison Glass because a lot of these turquoise and the limes, the golds, they, they really, really do feature a lot with Alison Glass prints. And of course, a lot of Alison Glass prints are very intensely coloured. They're sort of not solids, but they have a very, very solid look from, from and they would work really well with this. So if you love your brights or your modern quilting, this would work really well as one of those sort of very hard to find lights which of course we need to create contrast in our quilting. That's gorgeous, isn't it? It's a small, I'll just show you the, the scale of it against my hand. It's a small print all over, little stars and diamonds and little circles as well. Ever so pretty. And it sort of shades through the rainbow multiple times across the width. Really lovely. I do like that. That is absolutely lovely. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Ah, do you know, I must say, I'm very excited as well because tomorrow I'm going to be on as a guest and I'm going to be on with John Scott, which I'm very excited about um, because there's been a lot of talk that, that we're actually the same person and we're never seen in the same room at the same time. But we proved it the other week. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but John's on tomorrow uh, presenting and I'm his guest. So that will be great fun. Hmm? Now then, should we have a quick look at these two? Shooting stars. These are lovely. Uh, Choice is black background, cream background. Should we go black? Yeah, that is absolutely super. Uh, very popular, this one. Again, this is from the Over the Rainbow collection from Lewis and Irene. So all of these fabrics would work beautifully with your early bird special. Remember, if you've already checked out, go back. It's OK. You won't pay any more postage and packing. It doesn't make any difference. This is wonderful. Shooting stars on a black background with little stars too. This would be great. And what about a wizard's cape or a magician's cape? That would be fun. Bit of dress up. It would be really nice for PJs as well. Um, ever so nice. Uh, lovely and bright. Christine's messaged in, morning all, you always have great ideas with the fabric. I watch on my iPad, I even take it in the shower. Currently washing pots in the kitchen, Christina. I feel like we've really bonded. <laughs> you know TV works both ways, don't you? You can see us, but we can see you. No, that's not true. <laughs> but every now and then, I wish I could. Oh, that's a lovely message. Thank you. I try, you know, when I see fabrics 
the sower in me always starts thinking about what I would make with them. Um, absolutely. This is pretty. So this is the same uh, design on a cream background. Now these would be gorgeous for lining a bag with. Light background is always better for lining because you can see what's in your bag. Um, it would also make really nice children's clothes, wouldn't it? Imagine a little shirt or a little pinafore dress. Ooh, a Christmas Eve sack with PJs in, Christmas PJs. They've become a real thing, haven't they? The Christmas PJ, the family PJ. I don't know if Mrs. Mills, my cat, would wear pajamas. Should I? Should I try? I think I probably won't. <laughs> you know, in the 19 years that I've had Mrs. Mills, she has never, ever scratched or bitten me. Not once. She is the gentlest cat you could ever wish to meet. Um, she's just very. I think probably trying to put her in pajamas might be a step too far, and she might just um, draw blood. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, these are very appealing to me. I love these. Can we do the black background as well? This is gorgeous. So again, rainbows, but rainbows as flowers. I uh, love a geometric print. That is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Off the charts. Look at that. Lovely message from Frida, who's in Essex. Good morning, Stuart. Just ordered your tote panel. Enjoying the show. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Frida. Really, I had so much fun designing that panel, and it's a it's a such a staple shape, you know. Um, what I don't know if they are called this, but what I call um, an apron bag because the front pockets look like an apron. Um, it's just such a useful shape and having access from either side into your pocket, uh, really useful. Let's just explain, I came up with the name Socialite. Well, I'm saying I invented it, it's probably out there already, but um, especially when I did the sewing bee, I found there was a real issue with what do you call sewers now? Because are we dressmakers, well, are we tailors, are we patchworkers, are we, what if we do it all? And so I, I thought, well, I'm going to call myself a socialite. <laughs> and that's what I, so there we go. That's where the name comes from. Uh, so there's that black background, beautiful flower. I'm actually rather inspired to create an applique quilt block using that design. Can you imagine like Dresden blades? with the stem and leaves. Shouldn't be saying it out loud, should I really? I should just make the quilt and then bring the kit to Sewing Street. <laughs> you can have that one for free. Hannah's saying we'll edit that bit out. I don't think anyone's explained this is live TV. How long have you been here? <laughs> and then the light background version is actually really different. Um, actually really pretty. It's like a pastel rainbow. Have a look at that. That is lovely. So much more pastel shades in the petals and then a grey leaf, um, white background. Really very, very lovely that. I like that. Now this. So that's everything from Lewis and Irene's Over the Rainbow collection. Now we've also got uh, a really fun stripe. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. This is an exclusive panel for Sewing Street. What you're getting here is you're getting 18, am I right? It's 18 strips and they're two and a half inches wide. I'm just checking the numbers. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 34, 50, 16, I'm sorry, 16. So you get 16 stripes. They're glorious, aren't they? Look at those. And they're not solid. They're a sort of self-coloured polka dot. So um, I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's kind of two shades of green or two shades of blue, um, just to give a bit of visual interest. Two and a half inches wide. You've got that fine white stripe in between. 
So, for example, if you wanted to make a gorgeous, now this would make a gorgeous um, picnic or lying in the garden in the spring and summer. It's coming, don't worry, we'll get there. Um, you could just layer this and quilt it. So leave the white lines in between, quilt in white down the middle of those, maybe add some extra quilting on the coloured strips and just bind it and, and call it a day. I mean, lovely. You could also, of course, cut those strips out and use them in one of your jelly roll or strip roll patterns. Be great for bag making, but there's so much fabric here. I mean, why not make a quilt? It is absolutely huge. Great value at 19.99. I've got one of these at home actually. I must, must use it. I personally, I think I'm going to make just a whole rainbow quilt. So I'm just going to layer it, quilt it and bind it um, because I love those little fine white stripes in between. The fact that it's already in a rainbow is just perfect and it's the perfect size for a really good sized um, cock quilt, well not a cock quilt as such as a sort of baby quilt because I like to make a baby quilt that's going to last a child up until about the age of three or four so this would go on a you know a, a small single like trainer bed wouldn't it very nicely and would also go great on the ground as a play mat so loads of things you could do with that panel oh this is rather nice I like this so this is a Oh, nice. So this is almost like a linen textured um, fabric. Wow. That's lovely, isn't it? So I'm thinking a banner, a flag or a banner to hang up in June. You could cut those into blocks cornerstones. I mean, of course you could cut them out in piece with them, but also just as a whole piece, you could strip, strip piece. Yeah, just cut those out and rejoin them. Sashings, borders, absolutely lovely. And I love the texture. It's doing loads of the work for you. Another thing you could do is you could cut half square triangles out. So what you would do there is you would need to cut on a 45 degree angle and then if you imagine if I just use my fingers like a square and put them there like that can you see so if you cut out a square here you get a half square triangle that was half light green and half dark green or half yellow and half yeah so you could cut those out throughout and then you'd have another one here that was yellow and orange, and then piece those together. You could also cut out just two of them, like two squares here, and two more, and then flip one pair around and sew them back together again, and you've got a four patch. And if you do it with three, you can do a nine patch. So, I mean, there's so much you can do with a fabric like this. It's absolutely superb. $12.99 is a great price. But as I say, I think for my money, I would double that up. I'd kind of sew it together and, you know, bag it out and turn it through. But I would leave a channel to go on a pole and I would hang that outside for pride. Absolutely gorgeous. Superb. It would also make a great bag. Oh, there's so much you can do with these panels. They're absolutely wonderful. They're such a boon. Yeah. My panel, yes. Do you want the bag or the panel? The panel. Less than 20 of these left once you've checked out, so um, don't delay. You can see there at the top here, look, there are, the, there are the apron pockets, if you like, what I call the apron pockets. And can you see at the bottom, you've got that little cutout, that's for boxing the corners. That makes it much easier and more accurate. Um, also, of course, I would encourage you, positively encourage you, to use this as a base and make more of them. You know, you could even use these pockets as the pockets on a bag that you make out of one of our other rainbow fabrics 
and then you could use the front and back, the rainbow panels, again with a different, maybe the border print, the, the uh, early bird, to make the pockets on there. So mix and match, they'll work really well together, but very, very limited stock on that panel now. Now, if you don't want to make fabric handles for a bag, you can always use webbing and very appropriate for our show today, we've got rainbow webbing. The price is brilliant uh, and because of that, of course, um, we're going to sell out very quickly. So it'd be ever so quick. Now this is cut into one meter pieces. So um, it, now this is pre-cut. So you, even if you order two meters, you'll get two separate one meter pieces. Now, if I show you what that looks like, that's what you're getting, $2.99. Most of that's gone, but it is absolutely lovely, really lovely. Smashing. Now then, we've got some more thread collections. We started the hour with Patrick Lose's Essentials, but we've also got a couple of thread selections from Tula Pink. Now then, do you want to start with Dragon? The Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath. So these are £32.99 um, and it's from Tula Pink. It's a Tula Pink thread selection. If you love Tula, you love her fabrics, uh, this is her selection. Now these are lovely deep rich colours. You've got 10 of them and they're gorgeous deep rich shades that really, really complement Tula Pink's um, fabric designs. So these are the colours that she uses. You're getting 200 metres in each. It's 50 weight. So again, brilliant for top stitching, quilting, machine quilting, and also for applique. You can use it for piecing, but I just think it's too good for that. I would use a, you know, a more of like a grey or a beige or a greyish or a full thread for piecing and probably finer weight as well, maybe like a 70 or something like that, or an 80 weight. Finer the thread, the more accurate you're piecing. That's absolutely beautiful, lovely orangey shades and golds, a couple of greens in there, some purple, a couple of lovely luscious pinks. I mean, that is just absolutely delicious, isn't it? Such juicy colours. So this is the Dragon's Breath, and it comes in a lovely little box, so it would make a beautiful little gift for you, for you, treat yourself. How gorgeous is that? Absolutely lovely. And then our other selection from Tula is called Unicorn Poop, <laughs> which is same kind of colours, but where those are dark and rich and intense, these are pastels. So let me just show you some of them in here. A couple of them have gone walkabouts, but there you go, you can see. So they're kind of sugared almonds, but it wouldn't be too let to call it sugared almonds. It's very too let to call it unicorn poop. <laughs> they're lovely though, aren't they? Like frosting or icing on cupcakes. Sugared almonds at a wedding. Beautiful. Or what are those things that are like popped rice in bags that you get that are all confetti colours? You know the kind of thing I mean? I've never actually eaten it myself. It's like popped rice and they're kind of, yeah. They don't appeal to me particularly as a sweet, you know, but. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Yes, we're going to do my, my which one? The stripes? The stri no, this is lovely though. I say yes, my rainbow taupe panel, less than 10 when you've all checked out, so that's going to go. But this, absolutely gorgeous, and like I say, I wouldn't even cut that up. I'd leave it just as it is, I'd layer it, I'd quilt it, and I'd bind it and that would be that. Hannah would love a bolster cushion, a really long bolster cushion. That would be really achievable actually. You could probably get two out of this fabric and then just use maybe a solid for either end and some nice piping around the circular ends. 
Lovely message from Collector. Seeing all of this colour is so uplifting. It's a great, great start to a grey day. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's just, it's, it's actually worldwide um, social media kindness day today. Should really be every day, shouldn't it? Let's be honest. I'm kind on my social media every day. But um, today is, a, and I think, a reminder to be a bit more rainbow, a bit less grey, a bit more rainbow. Um, see, how, see how your day pans out. Um, but yeah, lovely message there. Thank you. So that's our lovely rainbow stripes. Now let's have a little still of what's coming up next. Oh, lovely, the Bengal cat. It's our cat of the month launch today. And we've got the Bengal. There is the Bengal made up into a tote bag and also made into a notebook cover. You can get it in a bundle. You can get the panel on its own. You can multi-buy if you want to make some gifts or cushions. You can also get the instructions on their own. So if you've already got panels from previous months, um, you can get the instructions for those projects too. And of course, we've got our lovely guest, Cara Ackerman, who's going to be showing us how to make those projects and having a bit more of a talk about this glorious Cat of the Month uh, project. Don't go anywhere. Uh, stay with us because uh, we've got some lovely demos and some lovely fabrics too. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being well our family-run customer service team are on call 24 7. they're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible and not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out sewing street or yarn lane customer no matter how many times you check out in one day you will only pay one postage and packaging so don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out you will only pay one pmp even if you check out multiple times in one day miss the live show don't worry we recorded it for you Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, 
patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi everybody, welcome to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard, I'm just gonna write that. There we go, that's better. Uh, welcome back to Sewing Street. It is a greyish day out there, but it's not raining, so I'm gonna take that. We've had a gorgeous rainbow hour for the last hour, which has got us all off in a very, very happy mood. And Donna, thank you so much for messaging in to tell me that those puffed rice coloured in pastel rainbow colours are called rainbow drops. Hurrah, how did I forget that? You're an angel. Um, <laughs> And we have got the most wonderful hour now. We have got our Cat of the Month panel is launching. So November launches today. Now then, I'm going to start by showing you the panel on its own. How fantastic is this? Now, we have got bundles coming up, so, so, but... We've got the panel on its own. Now, the November Cat of the Month is the Bengal, and I'm hoping to be able to share some facts and interesting things about Bengal cats with you. That's a hint, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at one of the panels and see what you're getting. I, do you know, I'm loving the, the Cat Block of the Month. I think the whole quilt is beautiful, but each individual is so inspiring. So November is the Bengal. Now, if I just move this over for a second so you can see the Bengal cat itself, it's on this wonderful chartreuse background, uh, which really, really brings out the colour of the Bengal's eyes. And the Bengal almost looks like a wild ocelot. Although, despite that wild appearance, they're very affectionate, apparently as a breed, very affectionate, love their cuddles. So I'm sold already. They're very, very glamorous looking cats, aren't they? And inquisitive, very alert, that one. He's looking right at you. I love the fact that there are those little labels at the bottom. I think they're ever so smart. Nice to add on to a little bag if you're making this into a bag. Nice if you're adding this into a cushion. And of course they work really well on the finished quilt. And then you're getting this great bit of extra fabric, two and a half inch strips, and you're getting five different coordinating colours. The top one you can hardly see because it's, it's very, very light. You can see it when you look close, you know, obviously it's difficult under the studio lights. But right from light through to really, really dark chartreuse. Look at those, beautiful, nice and subtle. So you're getting five of those. You just can't really see the top one very well. It's a, it's a chartreuse on white print. But Cara will go through and how to use this. Now, lots of you are already pre already pre-ordered this before the show. Lots of you are multiple ordering as well. It is a great one to actually use for the quilt itself but then also to have a little coordinating project. So my idea is to have the quilt hanging up all year round, but then to have um, like a cushion that can change. Sorry, I'm just very noticing, noticing threads, beg your pardon, very distracting. Um, 
a nice little coordinating cushion or a bag so that you can change around each month. So you can do that with a second panel. Great value as well, 9 99 now, so that's buying the panel on its own, and of course, if you want to add in an extra panel to your order, then you'll need those details. But we've also got some bundles. So let's start with the market tote bag. Now, Cara's made this using denim, um, which looks absolutely wonderful. You're making a saving here because what you're getting in this panel uh, bundle is you're getting the panel itself and then you're also getting the instructions. And that would be 9.99 ordinarily. So you're saving a pound there. Great, so that's how it looks made up into a tote bag with denim, really love that. Um, the instructions, um, we use them for the bird of the month, but they work of course with any of the panels, uh, bird of the month, cat of the month, and you're getting your full instructions there. Car is actually gonna be demonstrating this bag in the hour today. Uh, it's got a lovely reverse as well, it's got some uh, pinwheel blocks, patchwork on the other side. This is actually a, a pocket. There's Cara's version. How smart does that look in the chartreuse against the denim? Now we have got some denim fabric bundles on the show and also the lining that Cara used, that amazing chartreuse green. You can pre-order everything if you want to get ahead and then you can just sit back and relax and watch Cara's demonstrations. So that's our little uh, tote bag bundle. So that's the panel plus instructions. We have a second bundle now, this one is the notebook cover. Now, we do, we're aware that on the website, the picture shows the tote bag again, but it, the words say notebook cover or book cover. Uh, this is what it looks like. Absolutely lovely, isn't it? There's the inside. You've got a little pocket. You can use it to cover your, your book. You've got a little pocket on the back as well. And I love the fact that it's got carrying straps, so you can carry it around almost like a little bag. I carry a notebook with me everywhere I go, Cara. Do you? I do because I'm always thinking of ideas, mm. of things to make or designs I need to do no, or just really things good. I need to do actually. Or things you need to remember. Just, yeah. <laughs> There's our lovely guest, by the way, Cara Ackerman. Hey, Cara. Hi. So right. lovely to have you back. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. It doesn't feel like a month since I saw no, you last. No, I know. I know. It's quite strange. <laughs> it will be. Christmas before you know it. <laughs> but this is our um, book cover bundle. So you're getting the panel. So remember that features the Bengal cat, but also those five two and a half inch strips. Do ignore the picture on the website, won't you? It's the notebook cover right here. And then you're also getting the full instructions from Amber Makes. Again, really nice detailed instructions. You've got a little popper pocket. You've got a pocket on the back. I mean, it's a really, really clever little project, this. Really, that is ace, isn't it? Now, we've got previous month's cat panels on the show as well. Let me show you. Thank you. There we go. Now then, this is the December, cat uh, sorry, December, October. I'm jumping ahead. This is the December. I, I said it again, <laughs> October. You've got Christmas on I your mind. I have got Christmas <laughs> absolutely stuck in my mind. So cute. This is a kitten of the month. Little black kitten, ever so cute. Did you know that ancient Egyptians, when a cat died, they used to shave their eyebrows off? to show that they were in mourning. Gosh, I never knew that. Yeah, never their, knew when that. their cat died, because they were sacred and so yes, important. Yes, of course. Um, cats have never forgotten that, have they? That they were once worshipped as Aww, a deity. They're still They've expecting it. They still expect it now. Yes. Um, but you've got that, so it's a 10 and a half inch panel. Each one is 10 and a half inches, so a 10 inch finish. Um, so great for bags, blocks, cushions, quilts. And then you're also getting your coordinating strips. You're getting five of those, two and a half inches wide. Absolutely lovely. And they'll coordinate. These are all different shades of grey. 
Now this one was demoed on the 12th of October, so if you want to go back and see how this panel was used, then do. It's yeah, it's actually behind us, isn't it? There's a lovely little cushion. And there was also a lunch a bag. A lunch bag, yes. Yeah, a lunch bag. Which or a I gin bag. Gin bag, good, <laughs> like it. Do please drink responsibly. Yes. They make me say that. <laughs> <laughs> There's the lunch bag. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Hello. <laughs> there he is. And back to where you were. So very versatile. So that's October. September. Is that the Maine Coon? Yes. I think so. Had a lovely... I remember. I remember. That's lovely. That's the Maine Coon cat. And again, a ten and a half inch panel. That's sold out on pre-order. So that's gone. Okay. There was just a few. Okay. But that was... That was September. Goodbye, September. And then working back, we've got August. Understood. Yeah, we will get some more in. Now, August, is that 98 or 09? 98, thank you. So this is the August cat, and this is the tuxedo. This is the tuxedo, which I learned, actually, when we did this, is not actually a breed of cat it's the coloring yes of the cat, isn't it? which you can understand can't you totally totally that's exactly what i look like when i put my tuxedo on i also <laughs> have that look on my face because i'm like ah why is this cutting me in half why, why is, is it shrunk so why shrunk? is it shrunk <laughs> i presented an award ceremony actually it was online and had to dig my you know during lockdown and had to dig my tuxedo out and um there was no way the trousers were going on. I was going to say, did, did they? Um... So it was just there, and then I wore pajama bottoms. <laughs> did anybody know? Oh, it was lovely. Nobody. Well, everyone knows now. Of course and... they do. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lovely set of coordinates. This one, you've got some lovely teal shades, and this one down here is a kind of black and white print, which really teems with the theme very nicely. So that's the tuxedo, and of course, remember that any of the. Um, uh, Amber makes patterns um, could be used with these panels. Any that we used for the bird of the month would work with the cat of the month as well. And then last of all, we've got July. And that's also out of stock at the moment. But I'll just quickly show you. No, that's the Bengal. Ah, we haven't got that. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. But our Bengal is the cat of the month. That is November. And the Bengal is most definitely in stock. Now, that's the panel on its own. It's 9 .99. And for that, you're getting your 10 and a half inch cat block. You're getting your name labels. You get two of those. And then you're also getting five two and a half inch strips of coordinating fabric that are printed on your panel which are great for piecing, great for turning your cat block into something else. Cushion, bag, quilt, wall hanging. Be really interested to see how you're using your panel, so do send in some pictures. If you've made them up already, some of the previous month, we'd love to see them. Heather wants to send a picture of her cat. Please do, Heather. Send it to studio at sewingstreet.com. That's our email address. And we'll be able to show those. And as we go over to our wonderful guest, Cara Ackerman, we'll be able to also see the Cat of the Month quilt, which is hanging behind you. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> there you are. Isn't oh, it gorgeous colours? It is gorgeous. Really, it is lovely. really nice. I yeah. love the way it coordinates. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really beautiful. But they all stand on their own as well with the, with the strips, you know, the panels and things like that. So yeah. I can completely understand if people are uh, multi-buying because it's lovely to have one for the the quilt itself but yeah. also to make some of the projects i totally agree and as you have as well do you want to grab your projects down I actually can. car and let's have a proper look at them they are lovely so this is the book one yeah and the only thing that i would say is try and find a book first before you start um 
to make sure that you've got the right size and everything that you're so going to be working. So do the instructions working. tell us how to resize it a little bit? Uh, um, a little bit, but it's quite straightforward. Yeah. It really is quite straightforward. Um, so I've got this lovely um, book included in, in here, and I've also used um, some uh, wadding. I think yep. we've got some there. Yep, we do. Which is really 20. nice. Yes, which is lovely to just sort of um, add a bit of um, sort of body to it yeah a bit um, of extra padding and the other thing is that you can actually embroider this so you could either free motion embroider it or hand stitch it i think sort of around the mouth around the whiskers around the eyes would just be lovely if you just did a few yeah stitches you could have a bit of quilting like couldn't you you definitely could you could trapunto could. the cat yes I and mean, you could do that on the quilt as well or on the bag couldn't yes. you machine trapunto very quickly all you need to do is um, piece of batting behind the motif, so behind the cat, like a square of batting, and then machine stitch around the outline of the cat. And ideally, you want to use wash away thread in the bobbin and regular thread in the top. Stitch around it and then use really sharp scissors to trim the wadding away so that all that's left is the piece of wadding behind the actual cat. Okay, so you trim that away. Then a whole piece of batting over the whole panel and then quilt it again. So quilt around the outline of the cat again and then quilt the background. And especially if you quilt the background but don't really quilt the cat. And then water to remove that first line of thread that went around the cat. So you've only got one line of thread going around the cat. And that's how you do machine trapunto. Easy. I, I did it, do it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite strange. I, it's lovely to sort of hear a, a yeah. different method. And How everything. do you do machine trapunto? Um, so I would do um, like a sandwich yep. between, um, but two pieces of cotton fabric, yep. machine around the outside, and then on the back, cut a square, yep. and then actually insert and some stuff. stuffing, yep. and then close the square, and you've got the... So yeah. isn't it funny how Well, that's traditional trapunto yes. to stuff it. Yes. But the machine one is so that you don't have no, to cut it's and, and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'll have to have process. a go with that. It's great. Yeah, 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 yeah It's yeah, really absolutely. good. Nice. Anyway, so we've got the book. And I love the fact that you've got so many different pockets. Don't we love pockets? We do we love pockets. For different things. And then you've got the labels, so you can use a label on the back. You've got the handles, so if you're walking around, you're going to a meeting or something like that, mm. or you just want to take it with you, you've got handles rather than trying to carry it. And then, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could put your mobile phone in there. Um, and then you've got a little pocket on the front, and that can be for pens. Or if you're going um, sewing, you know, it could be for scissors or yeah. anything like that. Or it could be your design book, couldn't it? So yes. it could be pencils and crayons yes. for when you feel inspired. Yes, definitely. And then a tiny little one on the back with a popper. And ah. you can, you know, maybe a little couple of bit, you know, coins or change yep. or anything if you need it for a car park or yep. something. So um, it's just really, really tea nice. Bag. Yes, that would be me. tea bag or a coffee, <laughs> <laughs> a coffee sachet. Yeah. Um, so it's lovely, really, really nice. Nice so sort of afternoon project, that isn't it? Yes, really nice. So very giftable too. I mean, the panel on itself is very giftable. It's a nice sort of secret Santa price, isn't it? Under a tenner. But also to make up the project, you know, I think once you've got a panel and some pre-printed strips, that is quick quilting at its best. So you can make a little project up and gift that as well, you? can. You? Oh, what a lovely gift. You know, if you know somebody who's into stitching and things like that, and they love their cats, yeah. how many people out there love their cats? And we're looking forward to seeing some of the photographs of your cats. Yes, please. Um, so this is the bag. So it's a very, very simple um, tote bag with the panel on the front. And again, you could do your machine trapunto. You could do some free motion. You could do some hand stitching for the panel on the front. And then on the back, you've got these lovely pinwheels and I am getting used to doing these type of things because I'm not a quilter mm -hmm. uh, or a patchworker I'm really enjoying sort of doing this type oh, of cool. challenge yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's like oh right okay and this is a big big pocket on the back so you've got room there to put lots of things and um, we've actually just put some stuffing in there at the moment but you can see it's a very very big bag it's got a lovely deep Base, hasn't it, it? Has, it's got it a very has. wide it's a very wide base that one and there'll be enough fabric that you could make a pocket on the inside as well and if you like zips you could put zips in there you could put um, a catch or something mm. on the front there and I love the coordinating you know the denim and the chartreuse again 
um, for the I handles. I love the way you've used the denim for the bag. It looks absolutely it beautiful. It does look stunning. And I've seen you've got different denims over there, and I'm sure that they would all work with we, this particular We have, one. we have. But yeah, I mean, it's just a beautiful bag. Really classy. Absolutely gorgeous, that. Um, thanks for everyone who's messaging in, by the way. It's lovely to hear from you. Uh, Heather said, oh, hello, Stuart. I'd like you to meet Luna, my oh. friend's lunatic Bengal. Oh, my Favourite activities include stalking, jumping, fighting, invisible ta attackers, chasing <laughs> ribbons and anything with catnip. This is the only in-focus photo as oh she is constantly gosh. on the, on the move. move. Loving the show, oh, Heather. Wonderful. Oh, Luna's fantastic. Look at that coat on her. It's so soft. Beautiful. She looks silky, doesn't she? She really, really does. But one of those cats that the only way you get to stroke is you sort of put your hand out and they run <laughs> past. <laughs> Am I right? She's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely. Bengals, I love you. I remember, do you remember Aussie cat? There was, uh, years ago, there was a breed developed called an Aussie cat, but it was so close to like a wild cat that they oh, were almost yes, yes, feral. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you yes. know, so, but apparently the, um, the Bengal is very affectionate and friendly, but also, as we've just learned, they're mischievous and very good Full at Full of character. <laughs> Full I of character. It. I love it's it. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, lots of nice messages. Um, Jackie's asked, hello Stuart, what size notebook would you need to go with the panel? About an A5. A5, So yeah. um, it's like about the standard half. kind of diary yes. size. So this is A4. It's about half, which is an A5. And um, the book I had at home that I was using was a little bit bigger because it had um, a quite a hard cover around it. And um, so I zigzagged down the seams what you can do is just machine down the seams, but I thought, oh, there'll be a little bit more leeway if yep. I zigzag it. Yep. So, so it's just an A5, an A5 notebook. So. Cool. I mean, if there was a slight difference, because some, some books are slightly thicker than others, you yes. can make slight adjustments when yes. you're cutting out. With anything like that, if you're making it to fit something specific, I would always say grab yourself half a metre of calico, or a solid yeah. fabric, anything like that. Mock up, you don't have to do any neatening or anything, any of the fancy pockets or anything like that. Just do a basic mock up of the cover, check the fit, and if you need to make any slight adjustments, then you can. Or if you've got a book which is a slightly odd size, you can adapt these patterns. You certainly can. You? And the other thing is, um, the book I've got in here, I don't know if you can see, um, has got um, sort of about a half inch spine. But you might find that you've got um, an A5 book that's got a deeper spine. Yes. So the only thing that I would suggest is that that, the positioning of these um, flaps here mm -hmm. can be adjusted, can be yep. moved over. Um, so don't worry that, you know, if the book that you're going to be covering has got a deeper spine than that. But as you say, if you do it in calico, just a rough one, yeah. you'll know because if it doesn't fit, then you won't be able to close it. Right. You won't be able to close it like that. So mm. and I'm just thinking as well, you could make a little tab at the front, couldn't you, with a popper or a sort of, so you yes. can actually sort of like lock the yes. book as well. Yes, yeah. yes, if there's lots of, of different things. Thoughts. And you know, I've got loads and loads of books at home that I do the same as you, you know, I'm yeah. writing things down and sort of re remembering things and sort of when you're out and about looking at things that inspire you and I think it's just so nice to have a, a fabric cover it really to go is it's lovely yeah it, it takes a plain book real into something really special now don't forget to get ahead and order your cat of the month panel or anything else that you fancy remember if you get your order in and you get it all checked out then you're going to get your your goods sent to you you don't have to worry about them going limited stock you don't have to worry about them selling out you You've got your job done um, and you'll get your order sent through. Uh, now, you're going to show us how to make the tote bag, aren't you, Cara? I'm going to um, show as much as I can Brill. on the tote bag. I thought I'd concentrate on those lovely pinwheel um, squares on the back. Um, because I just felt, for me, as I say, not being a quilter or a patchworker, they were the things that, um, not challenge me, because I love being challenged, but they were the things that I thought, oh, right, I will follow the instructions step by step. And the instructions are incredible. So did um, you use the panel for your pinwheels? Yes. So the um, pinwheels, you actually um, cut 
So you cut your um, panel of the cat first. Yep. And then the second thing that you cut is a square like this, but it's all in the instructions here. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually cut um, a piece, and this is the lining of the um, pocket on the back. And oh, then right, you'll good. Yep, and then you'll cut your strips out, and the strips will be used for the pinwheels. Um, but you'll have quite a, uh, quite a bit of the fabric left over as well, which mm. is good. So, um, but the first thing, as I say, is to actually read all the instructions. They are very, very comprehensive, and some lovely photographs here as well, which is really nice. Mm. Um, photographs on the back, so you're not going to be left on your own. You're just, as I say, just work it, work your way through step by step. Cool. Um, the other thing that you're going to use um, the lining fabric for, so it, it gives you all the information about what you're cutting out from the lining, what you're cutting out from the denim or your coordinating fabric if yeah. you're not using mm -hmm. denim. So it takes you through all of that. So it's really, really um, important to just spend a bit of time and do your cutting out. Always important to read the instructions, isn't it? Those denims, by the way, are available on pre-order or ready to order now, just go on the website. We've got three different colours, a dark, a medium and a light denim. Any of them would work really well for this panel. We'll have a look at them um, in more detail in a little while, but there they are, 4 99 for, for half a metre. And half a metre would be the yes, right amount? Yeah, yes, perfect. Definitely. Half a metre, 4 99 Because it's very, very wide. The denim from um, Sewing Street is very wide, Great. so it's lovely. You've got so plenty. So we can get things like straps without having to join them? Yeah, uh, the straps you join, okay. you do join, um, because they are very long straps. Okay. Um, so these are the straps here I've pre-done. Um, so there is a seam just in the centre there, okay. so, um, but the lining is perfectly wide enough. So. Great. But you can't see the join at all. Perfect, perfect. Right, I shall let you crack on with your Okay, thing. no problem. So as I say, your first job will be reading through the instructions and cutting out all your fabric and pop it to one side. If necessary, you can label all the pieces, which I find really useful. Um, the next stage will be making your straps and that is just joining the um, denim and then putting the right sides together, turning them through. We've got the turning tool, I think mm. that's still on the um, website. So you turn them through, press them and then top stitch them. And what I've done is I've top stitched the denim in a, a navy and then the chartres in a matching green thread. Lovely. So um, I just felt that, you know, if you're confident with your top stitching, then you could do the green on the denim and the navy on the mm. green, which would be quite nice. Yeah. So you can play around with your straps. So you'll make your straps and you'll pop them to one side. And then you'll be working on the front of the bag. And you will have cut all your denim out. And you'll have a deep panel of denim and a narrow panel of denim and that is at the top and the bottom mm -hmm. of the panel. You've already trimmed your panel down to the right size and then you've got two strips down the side. Um, I will, if there's time, I will come back to this and machine it. But that's the front of your bag and you will just match those. It's, uh, the other thing is for the bag it's actually half an inch seam allowance apart from the pinwheels. Got you. So the pinwheels are the quarter of an inch, but the um, actual rest of the bag is half an inch. And I quite like on a bag a half inch seam. It mm. sort of gives it a little bit more strength, a little bit more body, which is really good. So just, just remember that when you're machining. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to let you know as well, last few chances on that dark denim that Cara is using. It's proved very, very popular. Lots of you jumped online and snapped up your dark blue denim. Uh, really good for dressmaking as well, of course. I was just going to say that. I think a lot of people may be buying it for dressmaking It's a lovely well. soft handle, isn't really, it? Really, really yeah. nice. It's, it's lovely to work on. Great yeah. colour. Yeah, great really colour. Good. Um, but the others are lovely as well. Mm. So you've got the other colours of the denim. So you'll uh, then pin and um, machine. So you're half inch down either side. And as I say, if there's time at the end, I will machine those. But I wanted to get on to the pinwheels. So then um, it's showing you how to make the pinwheel pocket. So it takes you down here. And when you um, cut your panel from the top on um, Stuart's desk, um, from the top, for, so the lightest color, yes. she suggests 
marking that with a friction pen or something and marking it as A, B, C, D, E. Yep. So you've got all your um, strips sort of labelled because when you make the pinwheel, you want a contrast of colours. So you'll take a strip of one and a strip of the other. And um, I had some strips left over, so I thought I'll just show you on here and then I have got some um, pinwheels already made up. So I've taken um, a dark and a lighter colour and you place right sides together and then you'll machine a quarter of an inch down there and a quarter of an inch down there, which I've done here. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, if we look at the um, instructions, if you've got um, a creative grid ruler like this, that's really, really useful. And I've actually put a strip of, um, I think mine's masking tape yep. um, across there. So you can actually um, put your masking tape where the top of the tape is at two and a half inches. And you'll place that onto your creative grid. And that just helps you with this method of making the pinwheels. That helps with lining it up. Um, details on the screen of that creative grid's non-slip square ruler. It's six and a half inches square. Super useful, that one, for squaring up things like half square triangles and flying geese blocks as well. Really useful for this method too, which we call tube quilting. Because um, you've sewn a tube. I love like it. Like a flat tube. It's a really nice technique for creating half square triangles. Um, but also very, very useful for doing like small cutting jobs as well. So multiple uses for a six and a half inch square. I want to have in your stash, isn't Oh it? gosh, I love, um, you know, I've, I've only got one of the big rulers and I think I'm going to treat myself to one of the small ones now yeah. because it is so useful for lots of small projects, you yeah. know, and projects like this. For um, me, the essentials are six by 24 or six and a half by 24, the six and a half inch square and a 15 and a half inch square. Oh, okay. If you've got those, you can do it anything. Job's good. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Pretty much. I was surprised actually how much I use my my long one, my large um, ruler. Mm. And in fact, I didn't have one of these when I did the first um, project, which was the um, cushion up there. Um, but I still managed to do it using my large ruler. Yeah. It was just a bit more cumbersome. So yeah. it, this is really handy. Um, and uh, Rebecca will take you through, or Amber Makes will take you through, step by step, actually going through and making the um, half square triangles. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to show you. So I've already pre-machined this strip here. Pop that over there. And I'm not sure if you can see, but let's have a look at the other side. No, it's just a pale. I should have done it in a darker color so that you could have seen it. Um, but you'll be matching the line of the tape there with your line of stitching. And ah, so not the raw edge of the fabric? No, not the raw edge of the okay. fabric. So you're actually going to match that. And you'll think, mm, how is this going to work? It's really quite, um, quite clever. <laughs> so take your board and um, take your um, rotary cutter and you'll just cut across like that. Just need to make sure. I think I needed to change my blade, but I didn't. There we go. Okay, now, if you've got a board like this, then you can turn the board rather than do anything else because you still want to be working away from yourself. You still want mm. to be cutting away from yourself. And then you cut the other side. And that's just popped to one side. And that's your first half square triangle. Okay, and then, oh, okay, there we go. Okay. So even though you've joined at the top as well as the bottom, you're not quite cutting right up to the top, no, are you? No, no. So, um, but, watch now. Okay, so then the way I do it, and maybe other people will do it a different way, maybe people will turn it round. I actually turn my fabric over, and then you match, again, you match that line of the tape, and the edge of the creative grid ruler along the raw edge of the um, fabric there mm -hmm. and I've matched up my line there and then you cut again okay then we'll turn that over again match up the tape with the stitching and you ah, can go so right to the can't edge go to the very cut edge can we no so what what you'll do, there's a tiny bit that you'll have left over. Mm -hmm. So if I cut that, definitely needed to change my blade, and then turn it round. And if I've just moved my ruler, I'm just going to pop that back. 
So match it up again. And I've got a tiny strip of fabric there. And again, you want to cut away from yourself. Whoops. I need to get another rotary cutter. OK. And that's another one. Turn it back. So you just keep cutting your half keep square cutting. triangles. Um, so the next one, you're going to match along the raw edge and the, the line across the stitching, mm -hmm. cut across like that. So that only needs one cut to turn it over. Match it again. Cut once. And then turn it round and cut again. And those are your Ah. triangles which are ah. brilliant so what yes. we do now is we press so I love this board for being able to do the cutting and the pressing because this is on the diagonal you want to be careful when you're pressing and we press to the dark side yeah so just, yes so you just can press the seam to set it mm -hmm. and then open it up and just press to the, so the seam's actually going on the dark fabric. Okay. It, why is that? Why would you press towards the dark side? So you're pressing towards the dark side so that you're not seeing the fabric on okay. the light fabric, the light, yeah, the light side. Through. And just be aware there at home that when you use this method, the outside edges of the squares are all on the bias. Yes. So they will be stretchy. Yes. So just uh, be careful, be gentle. Yeah. Personally, my tip would be to spray starch the yes. fabric before you cut it out. Yes. So before you cut out your strips, before you piece anything together, just give the, the panel a spray with some starch. Give it a press. It will just help to stabilise everything. Well, the best press is lovely as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Susie says, I couldn't be without my creative grids rulers. Oh, Susie, I'm with you. They're brilliant. <laughs> the fact that they don't slip. And the, the lines are really clear to see as well, aren't they? They are, and I love that one that you've got half inch increments and then just full inches. Yeah. So you've got both on one ruler, which yep. is really nice. Keeps it nice and straightforward, Certainly nice and does. clear. We like anything that makes our job as quilters easier. Now this project, of course, is brilliant if you are already a quilter, but if you've never done any patchwork before, it's a great introduction. I mean, car is. If I can do it. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know, you're an experienced sewer, aren't you? But you yes. don't really do patchwork. No, no, I'm not a patchworker at but all. But this is teaching you that sort of simple technique. Now, what are you doing here, Cara? So I'm just, um, they call them doggies. Yep. So these are the little bits of fabric that are around the edge. And also, if your fabric has moved in some way, you might want to just take a slither off yep. just to square it up. So you go, go and do that with all. So the, you've got one strip and you'll do that. And then you've got the other strip that you've um, machined together and mm -hmm. you'll do that again. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. And then as if by magic, I have got some that I have stitched together, but I will show you how you stitch. I'll just do one of the um, blocks of four of this time. Mm, definitely. Plenty of time. As I say, the rest of the bag, especially with your demonstration earlier about the tote yeah. bag, yeah. Um, you know, uh, if you watch back and Stuart did the tote bag earlier, yeah. um, there's a lot of the techniques that you use yeah. then that are used on this particular bag. Yeah. So. Okay, so this just takes, I'm just going to cut four of them and then show you how you place them together. And it's really, really important to place them together to be happy and comfortable with the way that they fit. Yeah, I always have to stand back and look and exactly. take photographs when I do pinwheels because exactly. I always manage to get one of the half square triangles round the wrong way. I don't know how many decades I'm going to have to quilt for before <laughs> I stop doing that. Probably never. Now, if you're loving the panel and you want to be able to, you may be making the quilt, 
the whole quilt or you want to you've got your own creative ideas for using it you can buy that panel on its own and a great many of you are doing exactly that hundreds of you in fact are doing exactly this now the details are on screen for the gorgeous bengal panel all on its own here's that wonderful ten and a half inch square image really good size great for a cushion a bag part of a quilt a wall hanging i mean adding borders around that different plain and pieced borders to create a wall hanging would be fantastic maybe you know somebody who has a bengal what about making uh, a house like a cube little house with a hole oh, and actually putting the panel on oh, the side yes. and the name above the door that'd be really fun you could either mix and match different cat breeds or just pick one um, and use something like um you know kind of high density foam or i mean i've used, i've done the cat um, houses using Bosel in our form actually and that's quite successful yes. certainly for, for Mrs Mills who is light as a feather but I mean you know it stands up yeah she rather liked that I lined it with with um, like fleece oh and that is fleece. gorgeous very snugly uh, it, yes I was sitting looking at it for quite a while thinking I wonder how big I could scale that up you know what I'm thinking Oh, the thought of being able to just <laughs> crawl through a hole into a gorgeous fleece lined house and just tuck myself away. How wonderful would that be? <laughs> would you be but the details are there on screen for the panel on its own. Don't forget to check out or you might well miss out. This one is proving incredibly popular. Uh, you've got your little labels there and then you've got all those lovely, that gorgeous length there. Um, can I just check what the length of the strips is, please? Do you want a tape measure? We've got a tape measure. That'd I be certainly ace. have. Thank you. Ooh, of course, on. we've got a tape measure. We're sewing straight. <laughs> Thanks, Cara. So. I think it's about the length of the handles. So, um, where are we? Ah, it's 40, almost 43 inches. I wanted to check because I thought it looked like standard width of fabric and indeed it is. So you're getting two and a half inch by let's say 42 inches, easily 42 inches, there's more. Um, so it's jelly roll strips basically, yes. the same as a jelly roll or yes. a strip roll strip. Two and a half inches by 42 inches. That's fantastic. It's really good and then it's as really I say before value. you cut, don't do what I nearly did was cut the strips. Mm. Before you cut the strips you want to actually cut the square for the aligning of the pocket. If you don't want to, you don't have to use this because obviously it's on the inside you of the pocket. You could use your lining fabric for you that, certainly couldn't could. you? You, you know. certainly could. But I mean, it was I encourage you at home to get as much value out of these panels as you possibly can. I'd be using these for all sorts of things. I mm. definitely would, definitely would. Okay, so we've got four of the um, half square triangles. They've all been um, pressed and trimmed. And this diagram here is what we're following. So um, please take your time. Yeah. Um, I um, put my hand up and actually did one of them wrong. So I unpicked it, did it again. Did it wrong again. Oh, Cara. I know. You think, oh, I should I have learned. I feel it because I do it myself. I know. I know. And, and you, so please block. don't worry if you do that. <laughs> um, so lay it out and um, just as Stuart said, stand back from it or take a photograph and you can see the pinwheel. And then you'll take um, a couple of pins and just pin that in position. So you'll do right sides to right sides for the top two. And the... Um, the uh, seam's already been pressed, so they will naturally nest in that corner. Yes. Because you've got um, the dark against the light. And did you do four of these that go together? Yes. Yeah. So we'll do two and two, press them, and then machine them again. I thought I'd better do a bit of machining while I'm here. <laughs> and just be aware as well at home, this is something I don't know, I, I'd never even considered this until I was doing a pinwheel quilt, that there are actually two different ways that you could sew these together and still make a pinwheel. Oh right, is there? Well yeah, because if you turn the unit around, right. where, your pinwheel, where your pinwheel is kind of like light, dark, light, dark, it could be dark, light, dark, yes. light, couldn't yes. it? 
and you can't just turn it around and it then be the same as no so if you want four pinwheels and they're all supposed to be the same you have to sew them together all the same yes so when yes. you've done your first one and that's the pinwheel that you want keep that next to you when you're setting out your next blocks yes because you can create a pinwheel without it matching yes. and i did exactly that did you for a quilt that i was making for a magazine <gasps> And then got about 20 pinwheels in and realised that I'd done a mixture and they were oh, all over the place. My so I had to start, yeah. Not good. Brrr. Well, um, what I did was actually um, did all my um, half square triangles and then laid them all out so I had the four panels together mm. so I could see that they were right. Yeah. Um, but it was when I first started stitching that um, I had the problem. So. Now we've got another picture of a lovely Bengal to share with you. Thanks for sending in your pictures, by the way. If you don't have a Bengal, but you've got a Scotty dog, I'm more than happy for you to send in a picture <laughs> of your Scotty dog too. You know how much I love animals. But we do have a lovely picture of a Bengal to show you. Um, I'm just going to tap dance and I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about my cat. My cat's called Mrs. Mills. What She's 19. breed? What breed She's is she? She's a Burman. <gasps> oh, this is our Bengal, our pearl. Helpful oh, uh, no. with sewing. Sea is a snow. Oh, I don't understand. Yeah. Sewing sea is a snow. Helpful with sewing. Oh, she's very oh, cute. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Oh, she's absolutely gorgeous. Ian, what a beautiful cat. The, the, the pattern on their fur is just incredible, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is, it? isn't it? They're just, they're glamorous. Yes. They're really beautiful. Beautiful. And helpful with sewing, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Sue's got some instructions. Ooh. Uh, oh. 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 Great idea, Stuart. A pattern or panel for a cat dog house. Get designing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love it, Sue. Okay. Message received. Will do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love, I love a pet bed. I love making a pet bed. Um, I just, like I say, whenever I make them, I always look and think, could I resize this to adult? <laughs> you could. You could. <laughs> definitely. Now, I just want to point out as well, there's a beautiful little uh, messenger bag hanging next to Cara, which is another of um, Amber Makes uh, patterns, which is gorgeous. Um, but equally, you could use this panel with another of your favourite uh, bag books or bag patterns that you've got. Great on the flap. Uh, if you've got the instructions for bird of the month we're using those they work they're interchangeable that's the main coon there on the front of that messenger bag which looks terrific that would be great as a grooming bag wouldn't it oh, you could put, keep all yes. of your brushes and combs yes. and have you seen those gloves those mitts that you can use for grooming <gasps> that have oh, like gosh. little do they work I believe they do. Yes. I believe they do. So you're stroking, but you're also getting all the loose yes. hairs out. Yes. Every time I brush Mrs. Mills, I then, I probably shouldn't tell, tell you this, but it's quite a funny story. <laughs> every, every time I brush Mrs. Mills, and she doesn't need a lot of brushing, even though she's a long hair, I always make the brushings into a kitten. Really? So How? I roll them in my hands and they sort of almost like felt together. Oh, and I could make... you felt them? Could you felt them? Yeah, you could felt, yeah, yeah. And I make a little kitten and then oh. I always present it to Mrs. Mills and say, give your kitten a little kiss. And she just goes, <laughs> and then I have to throw it away. <laughs> Anyway, you know, it pleases me. It's the little <laughs> moment that Mrs. Mills and I share. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So uh, I'm She's struck. such a sweetie. <laughs> there is actually a, um, there's a book called, I think it's called Felting with Cat Hair. Really? There? Yeah. There's a book called Felting with Cat Hair. There really is, in this world, in my experience, there really is something for everyone. Definitely. Just when you think, am I the only person that felt cat hair? No, <laughs> you're not. A book. No, you're not. Nine ninety nine. Thank you very much. <laughs> How are you getting on with your sewing, Cara? Um, I've just had a, a little hiccup with the machine. Oh. I think it's where I'm standing. Okay. Um, and the fabric was getting caught. So getting a little I'm bit chewed hoping, up. Yes. So I'm actually going to. It can along happen when you're sewing small pieces of fabric yes. together. And if I. You I would piece these as well. So once you've um, 
you know, mis um, pin them all, more, cut them all and pin them, yeah. I would actually um, piece them and I think that would help. I'm just going to do that and then come back. That's it. Yeah, I'm fine now, I think. There we go. There we go. Howie, howie. <laughs> it's even more noticeable when you've got dark thread on um, light fabric, isn't it? It, so. it really is, yeah. yeah. I love this machine with the um, automatic cutter. Oh, really it's good. wonderful, yes. isn't it? Any machine with a cutter is something I would like. Uh, now, I just wanted to recap October's Cat of the Month. So just last month, it was our little Halloween black cat. Very, very cute on a grey kind of little um, geometric floral background. Super cute. Cara came in last month and showed us how to make the um, cushion, wasn't it? Yes, the cushion and the lunch bag. And the lunch bag as well, which are just behind me. Really cute. So the details are on screen for the October Black Cat of the Month. That was the 12th of October. Seems like two oh weeks gosh, ago. Oh gosh, I know it does, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. It really does. But um, there are the details. That panel's still available. So perfect if you're making the whole quilt. Remember in our Cat of the Month quilt there are 12 cats, of course. Um, they all have that lovely kind of pastely muted backgrounds the color palette is beautiful really for this is. quilt i think it's stunning um uh, you can just use the the panel as itself as the block you can also add piecing using the coordinating fabrics you get five two and a half inch by almost 43 inch long strips uh, which are great for patchwork but also of course you can use them as a whole piece of fabric um, and create things like bag linings or cushion fronts or backs. That would also work perfectly well using those. Um, and then if you need some extra ins inspiration, of course, we do have our bird of the month panels that you can mix and match. They'll all work with these. But those are the details on screen. Um, I was actually a black cat for Halloween. Were you? For a Halloween party, wow. I was. I was a little black cat. Um, Did you go trick and treating? Well, we went to a party. Yes. Um, we went to a party on the Saturday night, which was a lot of fun. So I, all in black? Yeah. So I was black polo neck, black trousers, I had a black tail, black gloves, and then a, a tail, obviously. And then I had ears Lovely. and a collar with a bell. And then I had, you know, cat face as well. Excellent. You can see on my Instagram if you want to Excellent. have a look. Excellent. Excellent. You know what we were saying earlier? Most people earlier? say I looked more like Adam Lambert than a cat, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But there you are. I'll take that too. You know what Sorry. we were saying earlier? Yeah. Okay, about how that's easy it is to make how, a mistake. How not to do a pinwheel. Oh, bless you. But isn't you. that nice? I quite like that. Yeah. But it's wrong. But it's okay. wrong, So Cara. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I thought, oh, right, it's like that. No. Turn around the other one. Oh, look. It's nice, though. It I quite like nice. it, but I'm really sorry. It was because I was um, undoing and I took the pin out where the pin was supposed to be. So I do happen to have some <laughs> that have done it. Well, it's reassuring, though, isn't it? Because <laughs> you know what? The person who never made a mistake never made anything. And you'd think I'd learn from it, though. No. But I think when you're doing it on television and yeah. you're you know struggling with them um, getting all the fabric all chewed up that's my excuse you're I'm amongst friends to it. Cara we all understand <laughs> don't we all tell understand. anybody you don't tell there anybody. are gremlins that live between the table and the sewing machine <laughs> and they switch the they fabrics did it around. they did it um, so as I say I've stitched one and it's oh look beautiful. it's right now <laughs> <laughs> isn't it lovely now what I found and I don't know whether this is right or not but um I opened my seams Lovely. Um, so that I didn't have so much bulk because when you have got the centre of the pinwheel there, it can get really, really bulky. Yes, it can. So um, I didn't want to have that there. So I actually opened all the seams and I was very, very happy that I managed to get um, the points. Sort of I should think you were. All They're beautiful. to do with points there. So the next stage for the pocket, so um, you've made your dark ones, you've made your light ones, is actually to attach a small strip there. So I'm just going to um, pop a pin just to hold that. Quarter inch seam again. Quarter inch seam again. So everything else on the pinwheel is quarter of an inch and everything on the bag is half. Got you. So I'm just going to... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Don't forget you can buy a bundle and save money 
by buying the instructions for the tote bag and the panel together. It's 18.99, so you're saving a pound, and you get the brand new Cat of the Month panel. It's the Bengal. It's in there somewhere. There she is. Plus the market tote uh, pattern from Amber Makes. Remember, full instructions, not just how to make the bag, but also how to make that pinwheel uh, patchwork pocket, which is really gorgeous. I mean, that's another bag in itself, isn't it? Um, you could use that on both sides or, or have that as your feature side. Uh, very easy to adapt, add pockets inside, add a little closure at the top if you want to. A good basic bag pattern, but also one that utilises the gorgeous November cat of the month, which is the Bengal. Uh, so you save a pound, 18 99 is all you'll pay for those. And then we also have the other panel, uh, bundle, which is same panel, but with the book cover uh, design from Amber Makes. And there is the book cover made using November's Cat the Bengal. Absolutely beautiful. And again, you're getting full instructions there. It's not just the, the cover. You've got a little popper pocket inside. You've got um, a pocket on the back and a little pocket on the inside as well. So it's three different pockets. Adaptable as well. So if your book is slightly bigger, slightly smaller, uh, you can make s small adjustments easy enough. Uh, but this will fit around about an A5 diary sort of thing. And I like bike because you can pay an absolute fortune you can, for you? the sort of jazzy um, diaries yes. or notebooks with sort of posh apps. But if you buy a plain one, you can usually get a plain A5 book for under a fiver, less than that, a couple of pound. Um, with a solid cover and then add your own covers. I mean the rainbow fabrics that we had in the first hour today would look amazing as notebook covers. The cat panel looks terrific as well. You could also as well do some patchwork, couldn't you? You certainly could and I think um, to make something like that, you know, especially um, with what we've gone through, make, make something personal mm. to give somebody that's unique, you know, mm. that's going mm. to be and you spent that time making that. It's um, more precious I think so. Yeah, it really is. Lots of opportunities for embellishing your panel as well, of course. A little bit of beading or embroidery, a little bit of free motion uh, stitching, either um, you know to complement or to accentuate different areas. I think shadow um, quilting as well. That's something I've heard. You know, where you go around the outside, yeah. um, you know, and you're a little bit away from the printed area. I think yeah. that looks really the effective. The little outline quilt, yes. something like that. Yes. You're loving the panel. Lots of you buying the panel and multi buying the panel too. One for the quilt, mm -hmm. one for a tote bag, or a tote bag and a book cover. Great plan. Really lovely design, isn't it? It is. It's beautiful. I'm carrying on. I hope that's okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so I've got um, my pinwheels joined with a strip like that. And then I've done my other pinwheels. And you make sure that you do the opposite. Yep. So rather than, but it's up to you if you want to do it that way. You, that looks nice, actually, when you see it on screen. Mm. It looks really nice, or you do it that way. Fab. Okay. Great demos, um, Cara. Thank you so much for your company for the last hour. That's quite all right. Time's beaten us. It always know, comes around too I know, quickly. I know, it's always the way. But I'll see you again a little bit later. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, I'll leave you to finish off your yes. real pocket. Yes, lovely. Thanks for your company. Thank you. We've got one more picture of a Bengal to share with you. Oh, hi Stuart, love the show today. Definitely recommend the six and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. Couldn't live without mine. Just thought you might like to see my grand cat, Saint. What a beautiful name. Fabulous rainbow start to the day. Love and thanks, Joe. That is a brilliant picture. Where are you? Is that where you live? Joe, that is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Some cats really like water, don't they? Bermans as a breed really like water. Mine used to come and sit on the edge of the bath um, <laughs> whenever I had a bath. I say used to because you can imagine one day Hebe jumped up on the edge, skidded on the water, fell on top of me in the bath. Oh my gosh. And I was cut to ribbons in her panic to get out. 
I was the ladder Bless. to get out. So, oh no, my gosh. She never came near the bathroom again. But apparently, Berman's like water. There you go. We learn so much. <laughs> Now, don't forget to get your Bengal panel or your bundle before they sell out. Remember, if it's in your basket, you need to check out to make sure that it's yours. And once you've checked out, that's fine. It doesn't matter if it goes limited stock. It doesn't matter if it sells out. You'll get your panel if you've already checked out. There are the two options in bundles, by the way. You can make your notebook. You can make your tote bag. If you were quick enough to get some of that lovely dark denim, well done you. Don't forget we've got medium and light as well. That's all on the website too on pre-order. $4.99 for half a metre. Brilliant. Might have to bring those back in, this, in your next hour, Cara. Yes. Those lovely denims. Because yes. I think they work really well with Sashiko too. They do. Options, options. Love it. We're going to go to a break. But when we come back, we'll be having a great hour with cork fabrics and some more bag making. So don't go away. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. I'm Sally Ann Harrison and I am a patchwork and quilting fanatic um, and I've been sewing all my life. I'm currently based um, here in Bristol um, but I used to live in the USA and that's where I picked up the sewing bug big time. I suppose you could say that my sewing journey began when I was about eight or nine. I distinctly remember the first thing that I ever made um, and it was I, I, I say I ever made on my own, obviously I did sewing at school, but I came home and I chopped up one of my mother's old uniforms and she used to work in a store. I cut up these little pieces of cotton and I made myself a bikini top and I can remember the absolute thrill of putting this little bikini top on and going out on my bicycle and riding up and down the road and that was the first thing that I ever made and I was totally, totally smitten. My claim to fame has to be um, demonstrating at the Houston International Quilt Show. Um, I am very heavily into wool applique and I developed a technique where you would use a perlay thread on the top of a sewing machine and they were interested in Houston I actually went along to demonstrate in open studios, studios whilst the show was on. It was really, really magical to have so many people that were interested in what I could do with a sewing machine. I am one of the longer running um, guests now on Sewing Street. Goodness knows how that happened. But I still get an absolute buzz every time I come up and do a demo and I love receiving your messages and the feedback after the show, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm hoping to bring you lots of new techniques and different ideas, so do stick with me and follow my Sewing Street journey. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. 
Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello. Oh, hello. That quilt does look lovely on camera, doesn't it? Hello. Hello. Well, hi, everybody. It's Stuart Hillard here uh, and welcome to Sewing Street. If you've already been with me all morning, thank you for your company. If you've just joined us, thank you for your company too. It's great to have you here. Now, the quilt that's right behind me um, is a brand new quilt that I've just designed and made. It's called Alchemy. Um, I'm so clever with my names. <laughs> the fabric range is called Alchemy. Um, it's by Tim Holtz and it launches tomorrow. I'm going to be here tomorrow as a guest with John Scott. And at 9 p.m., 9 a.m., 9 a.m., I'll be here at 9 p.m. <laughs> At 9 a.m. I'm going to be demonstrating how to make that quilt and we'll be launching those fabrics. They will be on pre-order at eight o'clock, well, seven-ish, something like that. So I would jump ahead because they are going to be really, really popular. Uh, it was so much fun to make. The fabrics are digital prints, so the colours are incredible. They're so luminous. Um, it's a quick and easy quilt, uh, very simple to make, but um, the results, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Looks nice. <laughs> Good. Good old Tim Holtz. And I'm thrilled to say that I put a picture on my on my Instagram and um, Tim Holtz commented and said, yeah, and said that it looked, I can't remember whether he said it was, looked wonderful or fantastic or something like that. <laughs> Hannah's just throwing my name dropping back at me and said, did, him, did Tim Holtz say Sandra Rhodes told me to come? I do mention her quite a lot, don't I? All right, all right. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, Tim, Tim <laughs> sent me a message. I still love it. Anyway, uh, it was lovely to make. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be demonstrating that quilt tomorrow. And also there's another lovely um, William Morris quilt that I'm going to be showing you tomorrow as well. So definitely worth tuning in tomorrow for that and all things rainbow. But this hour is all about bag making and it's all about fabrics that go kind of outside the normal cotton fabric. So we're looking at um, PU, 
and vinyl and pre-quilted fabrics and cork. So absolutely fantastic stuff for bag making. Now, we're going to start with some cork fabrics and cork fabrics have been around for just a couple of years now and have proved incredibly popular with bag makers because they add a whole new dimension to bag making. This is amazing. This is cork and it's overprinted in gold with a floral design. I mean, look how rich and sumptuous and elegant that is. That is absolutely superb. Now I'm going to show you, it's a really wide fabric, this. It's 140 centimetres wide. So if I lift that up so you can see, that is what you're getting for 10.99. That is fantastic. Now oftentimes cork bags tend to be, the cork is used around the bottom of the bag with something above it, maybe a vinyl or a PU or a quilt weight cotton, something like that. Um, so this actually would end up then making three, maybe even four bags like that out of this piece. Absolutely fantastic. You've got a backing there as well. Like a, uh, like a sort of fabric type backing. So actually, if you didn't want to do a lining for your bag, but you wanted to bind the seams inside, you could, and actually you could use that as the lining. Um, that's really nice, like that. And this is overprinted in gold. It's still really soft and flexible. I think this is the thing that you know, I find it hard to get my head around, really, because I think of corks as being the sort of hard things that come out of the top of a bottle of wine, really. But this is soft, flexible, absolutely brilliant stuff. Now, with very, very little of this left, this is a little bit special, isn't it? I mean, any cork that we have on air always flies out the building. Um, this is very special with the gold floral overprinting. Really elegant. I mean, lovely for an evening bag. Something a bit different. And it's got that lovely, I mean, it's neutral because of the cork, but then with the gold there, I mean, just would work really well for a purse, for a clutch. Yeah, you could use it for trays, you could use it for boxes. You could certainly fuse this to something like In Our Form or Decaville, light or heavy, and use it for box making as well. That would be really lovely. This is about to sell out, and every one of you has checked out multiple units, stocking up that stash, because that would go with so many different other fabrics, wouldn't it? So many different looks. Now, there is a silver version available as well. I'm going to show you that. We have got a lovely bundle, actually, that uses this, but I'm going to show you because this fabric is available on its own. That is something really special. Wow. Wow. Now, Christmases are coming. I'm just wondering... Home decor items. You could certainly use this fabric to create cushions, bolsters. It is soft and flexible. It's not just for bag making. And if you were using this for decorating over the Christmas period, this would carry really well into January, wouldn't it, and February, where it's still kind of frosty. That is elegant and beautiful. And I love the way you get sort of multi-tones of lightest silver through to almost like a charcoal, like a pewter. But that really is just about the way the light is hitting the fabric. How beautiful is that? Again, 10.99 for a half meter. And this is wide fabric. This is as wide as I can stretch my arms, basically really beautiful it's got a great sheen and shimmer to it that would be actually ace for making a little bag or something to take on you know dare i say it are we having a work's christmas party this year 
Are we all going to go out this year because we didn't last year or the year before? Nice little Christmas do. Fab. Yep. Yep, great ideas on Pinterest, of course. Here we go, cork fabric, uses. Look at all those things. Little zippy bags. Little baskets or trays. Clutches. See there, that lovely denim tote bag there in the middle where cork around the bottom. Again, you get about four of those bags out of a half metre and then maybe half a metre of denim per bag. Lots of fantastic ideas. That's very inspiring. You get some great ideas, don't you? Add a bit of quiltweight cotton, add some PU, add some vinyl. Mix and match. Very, very versatile bag making fabric, that cork. Now, we've got a kit which uses that silver printed cork. This is from Debbie Shaw. Let me show you the pattern itself first of all. That is gorgeous. So it's Debbie Shaw's zipped tote bag. Um, so what you've got there is a lovely tote. You've got uh, fabric handles. Demoed on the 17th of last month. So the whole of the top of the bag is zippered, so nice and secure. And actually, if you have a look at that picture down there, you can see a really good picture of the zipped top. So rather than being all open and loose, you've got a zipper. So it's going to open right up so you can get in easily, but everything will stay secure. So the whole of the outside of that bag's made using the cork. And in this case, it's this gorgeous cork that's overprinted with silver. And then also within your kit, you're getting this gorgeous um, webbing for the handles. That looks fab. Really nice collection of colours there. Nice soft sage greens and corals. And then you're also getting... Uh, half a metre of fabric for lining your bag, and this is in a lovely silver grey. Plus, of course, that terrific pattern from, from Deb. £26.99, that's a great price for everything you'll need to make that bag. Lovely message, thank you, from Collector in Merseyside. Hi, Stuart. I ordered a piece of the cork last time because I hadn't seen it before. Uh, it is really lovely in real life, better than I expected. Bless you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's, I think what's difficult, to, if you've never used cork fabric before, is how soft and flexible and how like fabric it is. I mean, it's a firm fabric, of course, and it doesn't have any stretch in it, but it is soft, it's flexible, it's easy to sew. I think, you know, when uh, my experience of cork is corks in the top of wine bottles and maybe a cork board, the idea of a, a soft, fe a flexible fabric um, is quite hard to get my head around, but it is absolutely brilliant. So good for bag making and also boxes, baskets and so on. Very, very versatile. Is it this one? Let's have a little look. So this is a plain cork, but it's quite fine. Yeah. So this is, I suppose if you like, this is your plain, undecorated, unaccented cork fabric. And it's a really fine grain, this one. Very, very fine grain. So this would be ideal where you want some cork, but you want the cork to be quite sort of just mellow and subtle to accentuate, maybe to give a fabric room to breathe and uh, so you can really see that, but you want cork. This would be really lovely to use for the bottom or for part of toiletry bags, bathroom organisers, things like that. I think this would fit really well. It would also be a really nice background if you were making, say, like key rings for Christmas, to have this as the background and then to have maybe like a decal or something on the top with an initial, that would be really nice. To you could label 
keys with key rings made out of this too. Garden shed, back door. Really lovely that. So that is $8.99. Gosh, it's an amazing price, isn't it? I remember when Cork first came out, um, it was quite expensive. It was quite expensive when it first came out and um, and it was very much sort of the fabric that everyone wanted to, to use but it was rather expensive to start with. I would add this in if you're buying anything today and you've ever made a bag or ever wanted to make a bag I would add a half meter of one of these corks in and just experiment with it. Try substituting what you would normally use for your front or back fabric or if you're making a simple tote bag just maybe the bottom six or eight inches of the bag um, change to cork so join two fabrics together um, and, and just have a go and see because what you'll end up with then is a little bit firmer a little bit sort of stiffer a more rigid base to your bag which will then make it sit really nicely it'll hold its shape really nicely too and for things like zippered bags toiletry bags tote bags as well they'll they'll end up with a really nice profile it's something a little bit different so that's our fine grade cork now we've got we've also got a medium grade so this one is um grain sorry This is the medium grain. So this has got sort of slightly larger texture or slightly coarser looking texture. It's absolutely smooth. It's really smooth fabric. It's absolutely lovely. It has a feel almost of like an oilcloth type fabric. So it has a smooth, like almost like a vinyl finish to it. And I think indeed it is classed as a vinyl. It has this um, soft woven backing to it. So if you weren't lining your bag, so I'm thinking um, my clear zippered uh, craft project bags in my book Bags for Life. Um, they have clear vinyl windows in them and then the rest of the bag is fabric and they're not lined. This fabric would be absolutely ideal for the fabric portion um, so still look really nice inside and where you've got the seams you can either bind them or I just overlock the edges or zigzag stitch them um, still look really neat if there are any loose threads just trim them off after you've stitched uh, that's really lovely so that's our medium grain cork fabric and um, same price as the fine 8 99 for a half meter remember if you want to multi-buy you can do that and you'll get your um, increments all in one piece so if you order three you'll get one and a half meters as one whole piece i would really encourage you to try cork fabric if you never have before try a half meter of whichever one you fancy trying and just try using it in one of your bag patterns really nice now is that the one that's got the gold in it hmm so this one, oh, I say, I say, this is gorgeous. I really like that, really like that. So this is the large grain, but it's also got some gold, a bit of gold sparkle in it. Now I'm just going to give it a little, can you see that? Wallets and purses, a little clutch bag. I bet Lisa Lamb's got some lovely patterns that would look terrific made up in that. Now, Stefan has asked what kind of needle you would use for sewing cork fabric. Excuse me. I would be inclined to use either a leather needle, which has a piercing edge, like a sort of cutting edge to it, or I think probably just um, a needle marked for quilting, a quilting needle would work. A, what you want is a sharp needle, and I'm not being <laughs> silly saying that. Some needles have a rounded tip, ballpoint or jersey needles have a rounded tip. You want one that's got a sharp. So things like microtex needles would be good. 
Um, a larger size, I would be looking at a 90 or 100 um, needle to, to sew something like cork fabric. But yeah, a Microtex or a quilting or a leather. Super popular, this one. You've got a lot here. Let me just open this out so you can see just how much half a meter is. I mean, this is a big piece of fabric and you've got that sort of larger texture, a larger grain of cork. So you can really see that it's cork fabric. But then you've also got, and it's, and it's there, it's definitely there and got that lovely sparkle, but it's subtle gold sparkle in there. So it doesn't have to be something, I mean, it could be a really glitzy, glamorous bag or accessory, but it could also be your Saturday shopper, you know, that you take out with you that just has that little bit of sparkle. I just think that's gorgeous. What a fun fabric. And it's going to mix really well with other fabrics too. So you could mix that with vinyl. If you're mixing that with something like quilt weight cotton, I would probably iron a light to medium weight interfacing to the back of the quilt weight cotton because it does have a, a, a heavier feel to it. It's a bit more like an upholstery weight fabric in terms of weight, but it's still soft and flexible. And you can add quilting to cork fabric if you wanted to. You could do cross hatching, would be really nice. Put some batting behind it and cross hatch quilt it. That would look super. Have a play, have a play. Now we do that same one with silver, which is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, we were talking earlier on about making accessories for Christmas that you could carry over into the new year. And we were talking about using the floral, but I think combined, the two, I mean, absolutely beautiful. Let's have a closer look at this. So you've still got that larger grain of cork. So it has that really, this is cork fabric look, which I love. And then it's got this very subtle, very fine, almost tracing around the outside edges. It's almost, I don't know, you've gone mining for silver and it's in little fine veins like sort of almost between the rocks. It's a very, very beautiful effect. It's got a nice little bit of shimmer to it as it moves. But again, it's quite a subtle look. You could make some really nice Christmas decorations out of these. What about cork stockings with a really nice cuff? I mean, I'll just jump ahead and just show you this, but combining this is the quilted we've got this coming up later but this quilted um, silver fabric would work really well for a stocking for the cuff and for the body of the stocking mm. or indeed bags I would combine those two for bags but this is gorgeous stuff so this is 8.99 for a half meter it's the cork vinyl silver sparkle fabric and again, it is really wide. Can I just remind everyone, the width of this fabric is 140 centimetres. 140 centimetres. What's that in inches? I don't want much, do I? <laughs> I should always have a tape measure with me. It's over there. 55 inches. 55 inches, so there we go. So really nice wide fabric, really nice wide fabric. Got a lovely bit of shimmering sheen to it. But it's subtle, it's subtle sparkle. Would combine really, really nicely with the floral printed uh, cork as well in silver. Would look ever so nice together. So that's another option. Yep, so this one here, the black and white. So this is black and white printed. This is almost like, um, almost like a marble 
like a marble effect over cork. So you've got black and white. It looks almost like it's painted, but um, absolutely beautiful. And again, we'll combine really well with either a black vinyl or a white vinyl or grey. Would look really nice. I'll just show you here. Those would look absolutely beautiful together. Um, we've also got, we don't have a black, but we've got a, a black PU, which I'm just going to show you there. So again, that's a black PU. So a wallet, a smart handbag, a smart shopper. Really nice combination, those two work together so nicely. So this cork vinyl with the black and white grain, details are on screen right now for those. And again, remember you're buying a half meter increment. So if you buy one unit, you'll get half meter. If you buy three units, you'll get a meter and a half as one piece. Definitely something that's worth having in your stash because the great thing about these um, corks is that they really will work with so many different fabrics. They'll work great with upholstery weight fabrics. They'll work well with PU, vinyl, oil cloth. Now, lovely idea would be lovely in a landscape design, hills and cactus at sunset. Wow, that is a fantastic idea. I love that. I love that. So I actually use it for a wall hanging or a banner. That would be terrific. Yeah, really nice idea. Because actually as well, you know, um, it's not a fabric that's going to fray. So you wouldn't even actually have to finish the edges. You could cut the strip, you could applique onto it and then hang it. Fab idea, thanks collector in Merseyside. Now we've got a couple of Debbie Shaw books and um, Debbie has written many, many books. But one of the things that for me really stands out in her books are her bag books. She does so many brilliant um, bag patterns. Now this one is all about backpacks, super useful for children and adults. What you've got in here is you've got full size reusable templates and then you've got 15 different projects that use those templates. Uh, you've got a handy elastic there so depending on where you are in the book you can Mark your place. It's a great one, isn't it? I mean, literally anywhere you open this book, it's fabulous. So in the front, you've got a wallet. And in that wallet, you've got your templates. And they're ones that you're going to use for any and all of the backpacks in the book. You'll use different parts of the panel itself. Um, such a great selection of different bags in here. And then you can see here, um, how to understand the template. If I just move this over here. So for example, um, here's an example here where you're going to use this part of the template, these templates here, this part here, this part here. It'll just be highlighted. Okay. Uh, then of course, good background information on hardware, techniques, how to make a zip panel. And then the actual projects themselves. So there's a whole range of different great projects. These would all work really well with the cork fabrics we've got today, the PUs, the vinyls, the quilted fabrics. Yeah. I mean, and also you could mix and match, of course. You might just want to use the vinyl or the cork for the flap or the base of a bag. You could do that too. Uh, loads of different ideas. See, that's a great idea for a little crossover bag with zip pockets as well. Very, very versatile. And the price is amazing, $12.95, $12.99 rather, for all those different uh, design ideas. Nice little nautical backpack. Again, a bit of cork around the bottom or in these corners, maybe for the pocket itself, combined with your quilt weight cottons would look great. That's really fun, the bear pocket, I love a bear. Simple drawstring bag, that's lovely, that quilted backpack. Now, Waterstones, this book, is currently $17.99, just to give you a comparison um, of what you could be paying for. Uh, there it is. There it is, $17.99 at Waterstones. Exactly the same book, and that's, that's the price. 
that's the price I've just turned the book to the back cover and there we go UK 17.99 so we're five pounds off that's a pretty hefty saving isn't it and remember you've got 15 different designs you've got your full-size templates and in fact once you start playing around with some of these designs you'll think of other ways to add in a bit of embellishment or a bit of applique or maybe some piecing and certainly combining things like cork vinyl quilt weight cotton upholstery fabrics I mean endless endless variations and of course Debbie what a designer and she's a great educator too so if you've never made bags before tips ideas tricks all you need to make great bags now the printed cork with flowers in the gold and the silver about to sell out really really popular but also really popular is the silver sparkle uh, which I just love I like the gold and the silver very much uh, it's got that little bit of shimmer and sheen it's like really fine veins of silver behind this really lovely sort of quite strong cork texture you're getting half a metre for £8.99 and of course you can multi-buy, you'll get a continuous length. Uh, superb to have in your stash. It's an absolute corker. Yes, I went there. It had to happen. I'm probably not the first, am I? Let's be honest. Lovely. That is lush. Now, let's have a look at some quilted PU. I think this is lovely. I'd like a cat suit made in this. Now, you've got four different colour options. Uh, let me just go through them. We've got the rose. Then we've got champagne. We've got silver. And we've got ivory. The ivory is the most popular on pre-order i would say this was at the whiter end of ivory it is still an ivory but it's a bright ivory it's absolutely lovely that is gorgeous um so this is pre-quilted it's got a fab texture the price for half a meter is incredible, four forty nine. So less than nine, less than ten pounds, less than nine pounds for a meter. It's one hundred and forty five centimeters wide. So we now know that's about fifty seven inches, fifty six, fifty five, fifty five inches wide. So that is, there we go. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's 95% polyester, 5% spandex. So it has got some stretch. It has got some stretch, quite a decent amount of stretch actually. Um, if you're putting this together with something like, uh, you know, if you're putting this onto maybe Bose Linar form or an interfacing or whatever, I would make sure that you iron from the back and I would use a pressing cloth, definitely. Um, keep your heat setting really low and just take your time. Always worth testing on a little separate bit of fabric. Um, just test it first of all. But I would go low heat setting and press from the back. Use a pressing cloth as well. That's absolutely gorgeous. So this, of course, would be superb for clothing. Um, I do feel I need to mention that this would be absolutely brilliant for jackets. It would also um, be really good for things like waistcoats and jerkins yeah for autumn winter very nice ski wear really nice but terrific for bags as well but as i say it has got a decent amount of stretch in it as well uh, which is a good thing but just take that into account when you're cutting out your pieces take your time you don't want the fabric hanging off the edge of the table when you're cutting it and stretching the fabric out of shape so that's 449 for half a meter that's the ivory and then we've also got rose. This is very, very nice. It's like, um, well, to me, that's like a nail varnish colour. That's sort of, because um, it's kind of a metallic rose. Beautiful, that.
What about a lovely oval or round vanity case? So the kind of thing you can keep things like your curling tongs, your straighteners in, or things like makeup, hair care, stuff like that. That would look really nice. That would be gorgeous for that, like a travel set. Do you remember back in the day when people traveled, they had a vanity case that took, <laughs> lovely judgmental name, isn't it? A vanity case um, for all the hair care and makeup products. And that would be a case in itself. But there's some lovely patterns. Um, Lisa Lamb does a lovely pattern. I think it's in uh, Bagmaker's Bible for a really nice, I think it's an oval vanity case. That would work beautifully for that. But it would also be terrific for a backpack. Simple backpack would be absolutely terrific. It's got black backing and I think some black piping in between the different sections of the bag would be absolutely glorious, wouldn't it? Really nice, got lovely metallic -y sheen to it as well. And it's soft. So again, if you wanted to multi-buy on this and make clothing, jackets, jerkins, waistcoats, that kind of thing, quilted, be really nice. Absolutely super that. So that's the rose. Champagne or gold? Gold. It's champagne. It's champagne. Absolutely gorgeous. Love that. So it's actually, it's layered and I think it's not stitched. The quilting isn't stitched as such. It's almost like sort of probably heat impressed or, or um, yeah, embossed almost with this quilted uh, crosshatch. Absolutely lovely. It creates a gorgeous texture. It's very, I mean, it gives a very, very professional finish to a bag using a fabric like this. The simplest of bags, the simplest of tote bags or zip pouches would look really professional and slick using a fabric like this. Now, a question from Beatrice. Where is the quilt behind Stuart on the website? Beatrice, it's not, it's not. The fabrics will be launching tomorrow. It's a new range called Alchemy from Tim Holtz. And there are 10 different fabrics. I've used nine. There is like a charcoal gray black as well, which I'll show you tomorrow. There's 10 fabrics in the collection. I've used nine of them plus some solid black solid to make that quilt. In tomorrow's show, you'll be able to buy the fabrics. I'm also going to be able to show, I'm going to show you how to make the block and how to put the quilt together. There is also going to be um, a pattern sheet uh, for the quilt. So tomorrow, 9 a.m., but everything will go online from about 7. Um, but yeah, Beatrice, thank you. Thank you for asking. Tomorrow is the day. I so enjoyed making the quilt. And I was telling producer Hannah earlier on, it absolutely was not the quilt that I had planned to make with those fabrics. And I'd even got to the cutting, uh, the pressing and the cutting of the pieces, and I'd got the pieces all cut out. And then I thought, no, I'm not, that's not the quilt I'm making. I'm making something else. And even that wasn't the quilt that I decided then to make, but it kind of made itself. You know, it's right sometimes, don't you, when it just kind of goes together. Never fight your feelings. <laughs> now, this is the silver option in the PU quilted fabric. Again, half a meter, it's 55 inches wide. And this is a beautiful, it's not a super Baco foil shiny silver. It's got a real, I mean, it's a lovely silver and it's got a nice sheen to it. It's really smart. Bomber jacket, hello. It is super, isn't it? Really gorgeous, that. And again, perfect for bag making, but also perfect. Now I'm going to also a little bit out there, but got someone in the family that wants, to, you know, um, fancy dress. It's also really good for fancy dress. So things like making a, you know, make a basic child's onesie out of any of these, because they've got that stretching as well. They'll fit and they'll, you know, give a bit as, children grow you know it might be a spaceman space woman suit space explorer it might be armor yeah so different ways that you can use it kind of futuristic robot 
kind of suit as well. So, you know, I mean, dress up, play is brilliant for children. They love it and it's incredibly good for them. Um, and a little sort of dressing up box. Yes, dress up. <laughs> That's some people's wardrobe, isn't it? But um, yeah, I love a bit of dress up, fancy dress parties, great fun, great fun. Be someone else for the evening. Now then, where would you like to go? Yeah, the Gold Sparkle PU, again, has proved incredibly popular. This is a really lovely one. So this is the um, sort of strongest grain, the largest grain of cork, plus this beautiful vein of gold in the background. It's lovely and subtle. Now, once everyone's checked out their baskets, there will be two meters left. That is all. And we started off with huge stocks of this fabric. You've really loved it. But do remember to check out your baskets. And if you really love this and you haven't already bought, I would jump on now, be quick, because there will only be two meters left. Okay. Now then, we've got another of Debbie's brilliant books. This is um, another of her Build a Bag books, and this is on satchels. Um, I love a satchel or a messenger style bag, and that's what you've got in here. Twelve ninety nine, and again, actual cover price is seventeen ninety nine. So you're making a saving of five pounds by buying it from us, and it's the same kind of principle. You've got uh, full-size templates in the front, and these are multi-use templates. So as you go into the beginning of the book, Debbie explains how you will use that template. Depending on the pattern, you'll cut different parts on different lines to create your templates. Then you've got all the techniques that you need, and then a beautiful array of bags. Now, in the book, you're getting 15 different projects, but of course, there are virtually endless variations. Some really smart bags there. This one's got a little bit of tweed on it. Fun bag there with some cats. Lovely, that. And of course, if you bought the block of the month, the cat of the month block, earlier on. You could use that for a messenger bag. That's pretty. A big bow satchel. That would please uh, the lovely judge from, from Sewing Bee, wouldn't it? Esme loves a big bow. She loves big bows. Very nice. Yeah, fabulous. Yep, so you can go from slim satchels, to fun, messengers, that's very smart, isn't it? Using a nice decorator fabric. But of course, any of these could be made using cork, vinyl, PU, pre-quilted fabric. And that just adds that extra professional look. I think the other thing that adds a really professional look to a bag, apart from using pre-quilted or cork or vinyl, is to use these um, pre-made catches. And also things like um, webbing, shoulder straps. They just add a really nice professional finish. The rest of the bag's made by you, but just adding a few little sort of pre-made um, bits can really elevate a bag. So that's the satchel bag, uh, satchel uh, book from Debbie Shaw. RRP 1799, we're selling it for 12.99, so you get a five pound saving. <laughs> Brilliant that. Ah, now, Beatrice, thank you very much, Stuart. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, showing us how to make this beautiful quilt amazing. Oh, Beatrice, thank you. It was really fun. It was really fun to make. I enjoyed it. And it's easy, and it's quick, and it, it's a good one, actually, for showing off a fabric, those fabrics that you don't really want to cut up. These fabrics were so beautiful, I didn't really want to cut them up very much. So this way, you get to see a lot of the fabric, don't you? And you really get to celebrate the, the print. Thank you. Now, got some PU. Mm, this is really cool. This is really cool. 
So this is an indigo PU. Now this is kind of like a leather grain. These are new, actually. These have just come in. So this is 30% viscose, 40% PU, and 30% polyester. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. So just to explain the labelling there, 30% viscose, 40% PU leather. So although leather's on the second line, there isn't any leather, so this isn't, this isn't an animal product at all. It's all synthetic. 30% um, polyester. So what you've got here, amazing. I mean, I would still use a leather needle for when you're sewing this because it still has the same kind of quality. Um, as leather so you still need a, a sort of cutting needle and when you're making your bags using PU make sure that you don't pin anything um, use wonder clips use the clover wonder clips to hold your shapes together uh, or you can use things like masking tape so for example if you're putting a zip on and you wanted to hold the zip in place you could either glue it, double-sided quilters tape, something like that, or masking tape to hold it in place, but don't pin it, because unlike cotton fabric, any holes you, you pierce in, in this fabric will stay. They won't heal up. Um, but this is great. So it's a really nice wide fabric. It's lovely and fluid and soft. Uh, would make a great bag on its own, but also you could combine this with some cork. I'm going to grab the the one that's got a bit of gold in and I just think those two together would look absolutely terrific so I would have that along the base of the bag as the base and even just a simple tote bag made in that combination would look terrific and then maybe something like a, um, a floral a, a navy and gold floral lining would be really pretty smashing. Great price point too, $6.99 for that navy or indigo PU. Brilliant price. These aren't the sort of fabrics you'd find everywhere either. Um, you get a few shops that really specialise but for the most part it is difficult to find. So to find such a gorgeous array of different sort of grain styles and also different colours brilliant. Navy or indigo we've called it is going to sit in your stash very nicely. Ever so useful. Now we've got the same type of fabric in black. Now I'm not seeing the black coarse grain. No, nope. I've got a very smooth black but not the same as that. Little technical issue. Let's do chestnut. Mm. Again, this is absolutely beautiful. Again, would work very, very well with cork. It's a lovely, rich chestnut brown, this. Gorgeous colour. And again, it's soft, it's flexible, very easy to sew. Um, you don't need to use something like an interfacing or, um, you know, things like Bosel or, or Decaville, really, for the most part, with fabrics like this, because they have quite a degree of firmness and stiffness in them, although they are still very easy to sew. And if you wanted to create something like, you know, a pleat in a bag, then it's perfectly easy to do that. I'd use a walking foot while you were sewing over thick layers. You don't get cracking because it's soft and flexible. What you see here is actually part of the design, if you like. So this hasn't cracked with movement. It's actually been made this way to simulate leather. And it's different in different areas. Some areas are a little smoother. Some areas you've got a coarser grain on. You could use this for home decor too. So let's say, for example, the seats in your, on your dining table yeah, or around your dining table need a freshen up. You could easily make some covers, especially if you've got drop-in seats. They're super easy to recover. I mean, it's literally a case of popping the seat out, stretching this over, round to the back, and then use a staple gun 
to staple around the edge and just neaten it up. You can put a piece of fabric over the underside if you really want to, but if you do a nice neat job of stapling them down, I mean literally 10 minutes and you can recover a drop-in seat and you would get two, possibly three per half meter. So if you've got four chairs, I'd go for a meter of this and you could recover four drop-in seats. So a quick refresh, but you could also make things like slab cushions for in your conservatory or in your motorhome or your caravan, something like that. Or just plain rectangle and square cushions works for that too. Now the red, that's like a cherry red, isn't it? That is absolutely gorgeous. Wow. So this is the red version. This is dark red. And I love the fact that you've got this variation. It's really got like a sort of aged vintage look, hasn't it? I could imagine this with big buttons through it on a Chesterfield. It's got fantastic grain and it's textured too. You can actually feel that grain in the PU itself. gorgeous. I don't know, I'm going to be honest with you now, I don't know whether this would be a suitable weight for making something like a coat or a jacket because I haven't used it for clothing but possibly. Hmm. Well it's something we have in stock so you could try a bit. For 4 99 for half a metre, it would be a great experiment, wouldn't it? It's not going to cost a, a great deal to have a go and see how you get on sewing with PU. Now, we've got lots of other different colours. Lots of you have had a look and picked out the colours that you like. There's a gorgeous bubblegum pink. There's a deep charcoal grey. Fabulous yellow, actually, a canary yellow. But before we go to break... I uh, just want to recap a little kit that we've got from Debbie Shaw. Once these are gone, they will be gone. We won't be able to make any more of the bundles. This is Debbie Shaw's zipped tote bag. Details are on screen. It's $26.99. We've just got a handful of these remaining. So you've all your cork. It's the silver floral cork. So it's a gorgeous sort of um, medium grain cork with overprinted with the silver floral so you're getting that and then you're also getting your lining fabric you're getting gorgeous webbing for the handles and then the pattern and this is a tote bag but it has a zippered closure at the top so everything inside stays nice and secure it's a great pattern from debbie shaw and it was demoed on the 17th of october there are literally seven left <coughs> okay, we're going to go to break now, uh, but don't go anywhere. Do make sure you come back. We've got Kara Ackerman back with a gorgeous Aaron Sashiko. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Street's and Yarn Lane's email newsletters so you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hello, my name is Mark Francis and I'm a guest designer right here on Sewing Street. Uh, you may have seen me before. I don't know whether anybody has maybe tuned into the Great British Sewing Bee, but I was there for Series 6 reaching the quarterfinals. I'm now here on Sewing Street on your screens, bringing you my very favourite sewing patterns for men, women and children 
uh, for dressmaking and tailoring. Uh, so you can fill your stash and your collection with my very favourite fabrics and sewing patterns, including my very own range uh, right here, exclusive to Sewing Street. Something you may not know about me, now let's have a think. A lot of this has been covered on the sewing bee, but uh, I am a Blue Peter badge winner. I know, I know. I haven't worn it in a while. Slightly too old to get into Warwick Castle these days wearing it, but you never, I don't know, do I pass for 16? I don't know, possibly not anymore. Um, and I'm also, hence the piano, uh, a pianist I've been playing since the age of seven, when my school teacher at the time taught me a little under duress from my mother because he thought I would be terrible. Turned out I wasn't, but there we go. Such is life, you never know until you give it a go. <gasps> Have I just invented a new catchphrase? I don't know. You never know until you give it a go. Caption across the screen, please. Thank you very much. So do join me popping up on your screens on here on Sewing Street to bring you my very favourite sewing patterns uh, and fabrics from across the range, including my very own uh, range of sewing patterns from Sewmark Francis, um, including this very Turlo shirt. Um, more to come on a regular basis, so do keep tuned for that. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page are you a fan of sewing street and yarn lane why not join our growing facebook fans pages just search sewing street fans and yarn lane tv fans on facebook and click join group it's that simple Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. In need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. 
You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hello there, it's wonderful to have your company today on Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard and we've got a great hour ahead of us now, which is all about Sashiko, that beautiful and very elegant, but also very simple embroidery technique from Japan. We've got some beautiful projects for you, some absolutely incredible pre-printed panels. So no marking required, straight to the good bit, straight to the stitching. And we've got some fantastic reductions, price reductions, so that it's making getting into this wonderful craft even more affordable. It's a great time to have a go at Sashiko. Or if you've already tried Sashiko, do send in pictures of your projects and tell us why you love this beautiful Japanese style of embroidery so much. Now we have got our wonderful guest, Cara Ackerman, who's coming up very shortly. But first of all, I want to show you what we've got on the show. Now we've got a number of different bundles and the great news is that these bundles have already been reduced by £10. Each bundle reduced by £10. We've also got some individual, we've got the, them available as individual items. The price is going to crash in the hour, but the bundles are still the best price to get these um, sashiko panels. Okay. Each panel is going to go from $19.99 to $16.99. Okay, so that price is going to crash. But our bundles, and we'll have a look at them now, are even better value. So before we even get to them, I wanted to just point that out. Okay, so where should we start? Let's start with the, and the so this is other, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop that out of the way so I've got a little bit of space in front of me. Now, um, sashiko is a type of embroidery. It's very simple. It's a running stitch, um, but the, the results are absolutely beautiful. So in this bundle, this is called, uh, well, it features flowers, uh, there's some rabbits, there's a cat, there's florals. Let me show you. They're absolutely gorgeous. So this is backing fabric, yeah? Yeah, so you get your printed panel and then you also get your backing fabric as well. So this is the red, but this is really a kind of a deep rusty orange. And you can see the design is all printed and you literally stitch where there is a stitch mark. So these are all like a little running stitch. Okay, so you've got dragonflies, um, parent and child ra uh, rabbit. You've got a little cat there, a lovely floral rondelle some little blossoms here and some cherry blossom down here as well. Lovely background as well. Now you've got six different designs there, plus you've got this gorgeous strip as well down the side, plus the backing fabrics. So that's in the red. And then also within this bundle, you're also getting those same designs on the charcoal gray. So you're actually making a saving of 10 pounds by buying those two bundles together. Those two, those two packs together. Shall I get the grey out as well? Mm, let's have a look at the grey too. Now there's a really huge saving here. It's like 25%, isn't it, off? So this is your grey. That is absolutely gorgeous. And again, you've got your printed panel, which has got the six different designs. Just move that down so you can see. We've got dragonflies, rabbits, the florals, the cat. Absolutely stunning designs. So these would all make up into coasters, but also Cara, I think, has been very creative and clever and created a gorgeous cushion using four of these designs. Um, they would be great for a table runner too. You could make some really gorgeous, like a bell pull or like a long, thin wall hanging would look amazing. 
And again, you get that backing fabric as well with each panel. So here's our first one. This is our animals, Sashiko and Hitomi Sashi coaster bundle. I hope I said that right. <laughs> I'll pop these away. They're just lovely though. We certainly can, right. I don't think I'm going to be able to put them away very well, am I? I'm just going to... There we go. Right, pop those to one side. So our next one is... Sample grey, sample red. Right. Now, Cara's used this one to make some coasters, which are absolutely beautiful. Really, really gorgeous. So this one features some more geometric patterns. There we go. I'll turn it around the right way. That is so elegant. I love, I mean, the, the grey background, it's a kind of brownish grey. Mm, it's, it's a really unusual colour. Yeah. And I think in different light, it, light, it um, sort of I mean, just looks look at that beautiful cushion that Cara's made. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. And this uses four designs with a bit of sashing in between. I just think that is incredible. It's so classy. And that's a project that you could be working on over winter. Definitely. I mean, I um, actually sat and stitched these over the weekend when we were visiting some friends. Oh. And I was able to sit and you're chatting away and everything. And before you know it, you've done four of them. And you stitched all of them in a weekend? Yeah. Oh, wow. in a day. I, really? I stitched all four of those in wow. a day. Wow. And then um, the following day, I actually made the cushion and used Osnaberg in between. Yeah. Um, because it was the right weight. Yes. Um, but I used the backing fabric that you've got for the mm -hmm. coasters. So the plain fabric yep. I actually used for right the way around the outside. Got you. I wondered where you'd got that from. I didn't realise that it, you actually get this piece of fabric. So you get this piece of solid fabric in with the printed panel as well. It's meant as a backing for the coasters, but as Cara just explained, she used it for the border of her Sashiko cushion, which I think is stunning. Absolutely Thank stunning. You. And so you're getting those six different motifs, so six different panels, um, and then you're also getting this strip down the side. What would that strip be for? You could use that for um, some sashing if you wanted to. Yep. So if you wanted, you were saying about, you know, maybe making a, a tall, thin picture or hanging or something mm. like that, you could use that. Mm. But what I would do is if you're going to use that for sashing, I would cut it, then stitch it. Because right. what you don't want to do is stitch it and then cut it and you're cutting the thread. Of course. So you'd actually sort of um, decide what right you're going length. to, yeah, cut it to the right length and everything. Understood, understood, yeah. It is really lovely. It would also make a really nice sort of decorative band that you could put around maybe something like a plant pot or a you know, storage jar or something like that could look really nice. Maybe just do like a little loop on one end and a button on the other yes. that you could put around just as a little decorative trim. I think I've used um, some of the square coasters I actually used and I put them um, diagonally so they were more like a diamond yeah. on a little clutch bag and that um, long strip would yeah. be lovely for the top of the clutch bag. That's a really um, nice idea. You could put idea. that all the way around. Yeah, so. it's a band across the top. I love yes. that idea. And also the setting them on point, I'd never even thought, but again, you could put some triangles of plain fabric either oh, side gosh, to yes. square that up yes. as well. Yes. Um, and just expand the size. So lots and lots of different creative uses. If you've ever wanted to try Sashiko, these are small, achievable sizes, aren't they? They definitely are. And, um, you know, either you can buy the panel, stitch them and give them as presents, but you imagine buying the panel and then cutting them up and making little kits. Oh, yeah. Because they're perfect for children to do. That's a lovely Absolutely idea, too. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, because it is a running stitch. I mean, of course, it is elevated to an absolute art form. Um, oh my gosh, yes. In the hands of experts. Yes. But you can see that for if you can do a running stitch, you've got the printed lines to follow, the design is all there. You can achieve fantastic results and get something really beautiful at the end of, of your and envelope. And it's, it's very mindful, it's very therapeutic, it's repetitive. 
so you can sit and as I say I was chatting away and mm. you know you, you can't really make a mistake no as long as you're following the um, printing on the fabric and um, but it is very very mindful it's very relaxing um, it's a lovely way you know a, a nice winter's evening and you sit I'm and thinking just of a betwixtmas project yes definitely we all need a betwixtmas project <laughs> don't we something between Boxing Day and New Year's Eve there's that sort of time which most of us have got time on our hands yes and we don't particularly want to or are going anywhere but yeah. it's nice to have a little project isn't it it definitely is mm. and you get six of those little panels which is fantastic i only used four for the um cushion yeah but you know i i love your idea of putting it on an angle and then um, squaring it up and then building it up. So. Absolutely. And if, for example, you love the grey and you want to just focus in on that, you can also buy, we've got four different options. You can buy all of those four different um, panels on their own and then you would have 24 different square motifs, wouldn't you? I mean, in yes. total, you've got 48. So if you actually wanted to make a big wall hanging yes out of these you absolutely could you definitely can and also you can you can use them as patches yes so you can put them onto a denim jacket oh. or something like that though that denim that we had earlier yes. was just perfect you yes. know to put some of these as patches because that's what Sash sashiko was originally it was sort of like for mending <laughs> and strengthening garments Amazing. so you know it is something and then what you can do is use the thread and sort of um, sew onto the denim and then sew some of the patches on which would be really nice yeah no that sounds beautiful um do you want to have a look at the red sample opened yeah that one hadn't been opened but i will open it definitely <laughs> it's lovely these are absolutely gorgeous aren't they the fabric is just beautiful yeah. it really is i it mean the thing is you know i've seen many many quilts and uh, things japanese yes uh, you know quilts made by japanese makers and the workmanship is always exquisite yes. it is breathtaking yes. on every level and um you know, I didn't know that that Sashi Code started as a mending technique. Yes. And it just, it ties in with all those things I know about Japanese quilt makers to elevate the most basic to high art form. It just, it takes my breath away. It's absolutely amazing. So this is what the same designs look like in the red version, which again is more of a brick red. So if you think of that kind of terracotta, uh, it is absolutely lovely. Uh, really gorgeous this is lovely isn't it it's like a hashtag like a screen <laughs> you're getting all these six different squares and i'm just going to measure them so they are approximately four and a half inches square approximately four and a half inches square it's really beautiful designs and you know each one would you would you put them in a hoop to embroider them? No, um, you're best not to with sashiko. Um, you can start with knots as well, which okay. if you're an embroiderer, you know, knots is sort of a real, there are two ways of starting, but you can start with knots, um, which is okay, but you want it loose in your hand. Okay. You do want it loose in your hand. Fine, so would you work on the whole piece? No, I'd actually cut them. Cut um, it depends what you want to um, do it for. And if you've just got a small item, something you can pop into your handbag and take with you. It's a you great know, it's, idea. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so I do tend to cut them um, down. And it just means that it's more achievable. You know, when you start something and you're mm. quite daunted by the fact that mm. you've got six of them to make, but if they're the, those little four and a half inch squares, you yeah. know, they don't take long. No, I mean, they look quite intricate, but I mean, actually when you break it down like that, they're very simple. It's a basic running stitch. So it's going to be very achievable. Cara did all of those four and made it like Christian in a weekend, which I think is amazing work, but it's also very inspiring. That's been very, very uh, popular so far. Let's have a look at some of the other bundles that are available. We'll look at this one next. So this one, Sashiko Coaster Part 2. So that's Geo 2. Now the cushion's made out of this version, this um, set of designs, but in the grey, 
Now in the bundle, which is on screen now, $29.99, you get the panel in grey and you get the panel in the brick red. Plus remember you get those backing pieces of fabric as well, which Cara very cleverly used to make the, the border of her quilt. So these are the designs. Wow! Those are absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? I can't believe that all the designs are just made from running stitch. I know, and um, it's quite clever as well. There's a little leaflet that comes in with each of the panels, mm -hmm. and um, there are methods of actually working the design. And sometimes you look at something and you think, oh yeah, I'll just go around the outside of it. But actually it never ever looks so nice, if you like. Right. Um, but if you follow their guidance, and do sort of like a line across the design, either horizontally or vertically yes. or diagonally, the stitches are going in and out of the fabric in the right direction. And I that's understand. the secret is getting the stitches rather than a stitch, then trying to do it and then trying to do it. Yeah. You know, that can actually sort of create um, problems. And yes. It doesn't look so neat. I can understand um, that. I can understand that. So something like this design at the top, I could imagine being worked in diagonal exactly. lines. Exactly. exactly. Rather than trying to go around. Exactly. And it does look very complex, and that probably is the most complex and dense design. It is. But again, it's just made out of running stitch. So are each of the lines one stitch? Yes. Um, although having said that, because some of the designs are quite um, detailed, um, there are two methods and when we come to look at them in more mm. detail um, each line can be a stitch or if there's a longer line you could do two stitches understood so you can make your stitches all the same size or you can make it a long stitch and may i ask the printing on this is it going to fade away over time you wash it you, you put it, it in yeah you put it, it in out. warm water yep. I, I soaked it overnight and then in the morning once I've soaked it um, just uh, gently just rub it yep. together and then the um, printing disappears completely. Perfect. So we don't have to worry about covering every line. No. No, Ace. not at all. Ace. So that is the GO2 Sashiko. Now you're getting a panel in the brick red plus the backing fabric. You're also getting the same six designs plus that strip and the backing fabric in the grey and that's the one that Cara's used for her cushion. Would you like me to grab that one out as well? No. Nope. We can see that <laughs> in the cushion. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by that. I think it's really lovely. I'd really like to have a go at doing that. I think um, what I wanted to do was show that it's lovely as coasters, absolutely gorgeous as coasters, but I just wanted to sort of see if you could create something else quite simply yeah. and take four designs and then using, um, you know, I use the cream thread on there. We've got lots of different mm, coloured threads. So whatever thread colour you use for the actual sashiko, um, you can then choose a colour that tones with that. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then make, um, you know, make the sashing and everything. But um, it was quite funny. It came together really, really easily. It wasn't a difficult, it wasn't a complicated design. It's very um, impressive looking. It does look really nice from yeah, a distance, doesn't it? it's really it? impressive. It looks really impressive close up as well. Yeah. There we go, just to prove the point. <laughs> <laughs> now we've had a question asking are the instructions in English? They are in English. They are. Yes, they, they are. are. And there's lots of helpful t hints and tips about um your stitching, what you can make from the um panels, um you know, how to do your stitching, how to start, how to finish. Mm. Um there's lots and lots of information in there which is really nice. It's a really good question actually because um oftentimes they are not in English. A lot of the Japanese they, um, written yes. books on bag making and things like that are only available in Japanese. But this is all in English. Um, tells you how to create the stitching. So Hitomi Zashi is one stitch sashi, uh, sashiko. And then the basic sashiko stitching. Um, and then how to create the design also what's right and what's wrong if you like when you get to a corner or a t-junction or a crossing that's right i remember this i did a class yes. years ago at yes. festival of quilts on sashiko and i remember when you had the sort of a cross you absolutely did not cross the stitches no, that's right. you left a little perfect gap in the center yes. between them all yes 
But I mean, this was being taught by two Japanese ladies wow. who had been doing sashiko for many, many years. And this was kind of, they were teaching it in its purest form. That must have been amazing. Oh, it was really good to do. Yeah. Um, I, I, I heard the word unpick about 20 times oh, really? in the hour yes really? i think that was more more or less the only instruction i received Aww. throughout was to unpick but it's about getting that perfection however however it was still really fun and at home you can make it as perfect or not perfect yes. as you like yes i mean i look closely at some of these and i think oh gosh yeah, there's a stitch that's not quite the right length or mm -hmm. you know different bits and pieces but it's the overall effect and mm. i think if you can follow the general instructions and get the overall effect that's the most important thing absolutely i couldn't agree more so that's the geo2 sashiko and hitomi sashi coaster bundle and that's the one that you've been using isn't it yes Cara? yes and then the one that we're actually going to use for the demo today that Cara is going to show us how to create this sashiko again with a 10 pound saving already applied it should be just under 40 pounds you're getting 29 pounds 98 um, for your bundle remember in that bundle you are getting the red and you're also getting the grey. I'm going to grab these open so we can have a look at them. So this is the one that you're demoing with, isn't it? And you're yes. using the red. Um, the red or the grey. I'm going to actually start right from the beginning. So I, I'll Fantastic. let you choose. Fantastic. <laughs> so this one. Ooh, oh, these are great. I love that. So again, some really nice all over textures. Um, and then this is a great kind of swirl design. This is really cool with circles. And then that one there, what is that in there? I think it's a Japanese character. Ah. I think. Cool. Um, but the one with the circles, I thought that was very, very Christmassy. It's like baubles. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, really, really nice. Yeah, But there's beautiful. a couple on there that are really good to um, start with. So okay. we can start with those. Great. Well, that sounds good to me. And it would be good as well if we've never done sashiko before to really go right back to basics. Yes. Yep. So shall we go to demo? Let's go to demo. And then little things that come back up, we can always come back to, to me. So tell how do we start? Where do we start? Well, you, of course, will need some threads, but I know we'll go through the threads um, shortly. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to sort of say, right, you've got your thread, it's come home, you've got your panel, what do you do first? So um, I'm going to open another one. <laughs> now, the thread you're using is the grey sashiko, yes. light grey. Uh, we've got that on screen. It's a Japanese product, isn't it? Um, four ninety nine for a really big bundle of thread. Sorry, I should sit up. Like <laughs> <laughs> ah. So I've opened my panel, and um, you you don't want water or steam. So if you've got an iron, um, take your steam off. Um, I I have ironed this before with steam and the amount of water that comes out with steam is mm. not enough. In fact, there's some water in this um, iron, but it's not on the steam. It's not enough to take the print out, but just be careful. Got you. So, um, you know, so you'll so get your iron. panel. Yep, you'll get your panel at home and you'll press it. You've got your backing fabric, so you can press that as well. That one you can use with a steam iron. So um, yep. I'm just going to pop that to one side. Um, so that's your panel. So you'll want to choose which one you um, fancy doing and um, either choose, I've got the grey or the cream there, but I've also got some colours. So there are some coloured threads available in the packs. We do have some amazing coloured threads. Do they come plaited like that? No, I'm going to show you how to plait them. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> the bundle that Car is using is available. I've got it right here in front of me. This is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, ILUU87. And as is my want, I need to sort that into colours. You get 10 of them. Oh, how Aren't lovely. they gorgeous? Yeah, they yes. are. I've just br brought a few of them. 
because I used one the other week for um, a Christmas Eve panel. So oh, I brought the other ones. Absolutely gorgeous. So you're getting that pack of 10. Now, each one of them has 20 metres. How much would we need per panel or per square? Okay, so um, once you've prepared your thread, I'll show you how to prepare the thread. Mm. Um, that was one of the big um, skeins. Yeah. And that's what I've got left from doing the four panels on the cushion and the got two you. panels for the coasters. Yeah. So you've got plenty, absolutely yeah. plenty on the big skein. On the smaller skein, I would say you've got enough to do the six from one of the small skeins okay, there. Perfect. Yeah, I would say so. Perfect. I would say so. That's so if you go for just one colour, but you can mix and play around with colours as well. And I notice as well as there's, there's some variegated yes. shades in here which excite me. So there's one which is a kind of a mix of reds and golds and into green. Then there's one which is a mixture of greens into yellow. There's a brown and tan. And then there's also, I think this is my favourite, which is like a sort of um, robin egg blue or duck egg blue through into a gold and a, a light brown. Absolutely lovely. And they would look really good worked in the designs, wouldn't they? They would. They, they, they have such a, a really good effect. And um, because you have variation. got the different... Yes, definitely. Absolutely gorgeous. You see what I had to do there, Cara? I can't not put them in, put the things in rainbow water. I just can't. Oh, that's all right. That's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Um, so that's what you're getting in that bundle. Do you want to have a look at a couple of other thread bundles? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. That's this one. So this one is a, like a pastel, more pastel bundle which I'm just going to uh, whiz into a little nice sort of colour story there. There we go. So those, you've got some lovely pinks, a solid pink and a variegated pink and white, a yellow and a variegated green and yellow. Then you've got a solid green. Then you've got a variegated blue. This is really nice. It's sort of almost like a light Air Force blue, a sky, a grey or silver grey and a cream. So remember, you could use one of these to do your six coasters, or you could mix and match, or use the variegated. Really lovely. Again, $14.99. So $1.50 per skein, which is absolutely fantastic. These come from Japan. They're proper sashiko thread. Then the other bundle that we've got is a sort of brighter selection. And this, this is ending 2-1, IVUU 2-1. Okay. We'll have a little look. If you checked it on Bright before, this is what you're getting. This is Bright. Okay, yeah, so we got a little bit muddled earlier on, I think. So these are the brights. So again, lovely bright red, bright golden yellow, green. You've got some nice variegated threads in there. I'll just bring the variegateds together. Ever so pretty. And again, really, any of these would work. But I think if you want to go nice and easy, then the greys, the, the ecru, the, the sort of cream would look always look good. Now then, just to reiterate, the bundle that Cara is working with, which is this one, is called Antique. That's this one. This is Antique. They were in the wrong bags. Okay. So this is Antique. So this has got the more kind of subtle colours, those more subtle variegated colours there and then those solids as well but it's got that cream in which is going to go absolutely beautifully whatever colour you go for so that's antique and then we've also got one very limited bundle which is called Christmas is that this one mm. so this is a five piece selection for $7.99. You've got the cream, you've got a green, a nice bright golden yellow, a variegated blue and a variegated pink. Oh, 
Okay, Cara, over to you. Okay, so um, I wanted to show you how you start your thread. So you'll get your um, thread in a hank like this, and then you'll take the um, wrapping off, and you'll think, oh, my goodness, what do I do, what do I do? And if you very, very carefully, you can peel the skein apart, and it's actually quite a long hank. Like ah, that. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit. Um, if you've done hand embroidery, it's a little bit like um, perlé thread. Mm -hmm. So the perlé thread is quite often um, like this. And what you'll do is, once you've done that, you'll actually take your scissors and you'll cut all the way through oh. the hank. I know. It's like, <gasps> <gasps> what have you done? What have you done? And then if you want to keep a note of the colour number that you've used, because you'll come back to it, you won't use it all in one project, you just wrap the thread through the hank like that. Try and match the ends as best you can. And then you'll divide this into roughly, not exactly, into three. And then you'll plait. And it is just a normal loose plait. You don't want it very tight. So you'll just take your ends and make a loose plait. And that is the way to keep your threads nice and neat and tidy. You and then when you need one thread, you just pull it from the hang. Yes. So Got I'll you. show you how to um, do that. And that's quite a good length if you're doing a good run. You can get away with using that long, full length. Uh -huh. um, but if you wanted to, you could actually cut one of the lengths in half. Yeah. So, so that's your plan. Because I'm not very good with really long no, pieces I, I, of embroidery no. thread. <laughs> so that's the cream and the grey, which come in the large hanks. Um, so I'm going to ask Stuart. Red or grey? What am I going to stitch? Oh, grey, please. Well, I... um... <laughs> oh, quick. Can you do the red <laughs> on the red fabric? For okay, me, red. And do we want the grey or the cream? Cream thread, please. That's fine. Okay. Pat's messaged in to say, morning, Stuart and Cara. Good morning. morning. What is the difference between sashiko and shashiko? Lovely material. Um, I think a lot of people um, actually... There's no right or wrong way of saying the word. Right. Um, sash, sashiko, sashiko is um, the way that it's spelt. Yep. Um, if you have a spelling and it's got an H at the beginning, that would be shashiko. Yeah. But the, the way that I know yeah. is sashiko. Yeah, it's just a yes. different pronunciation. I think isn't it's it? a different way of spelling it. Right. So I don't think there's a massive so amount no of difference. Really. No difference, really. No difference. Not that we're aware of. But good question, Pat. Yes, and, and sometimes I say sashiko. Yeah. Rather than sashiko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, um, the, the correct way of saying it is sashiko. But it all comes down to that running stitch using, it's almost like a cotton perlé thread, isn't it? It's not yeah, dissimilar. Yeah, it's cotton abroder, more like a okay. cotton abroder, because cotton perlé has gone through, like, um, yeah, yeah, cotton perlé has gone through uh, mercerization, so it's right. really shiny. Yes, that's true. And the cotton abroder is, is a flat thread. Um, and it's not a divisible thread. So that's the difference between the threads, really. Got you. Okay, best so. Best not to substitute. Best not, you can, but don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, that. So I'm just going to cut, there are um, lines on the design, and I'm going to do, oh, we've got time maybe to do a couple, show you a couple. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut on the line, and you can use your rotary cutter, mat, and. Um, I've used one of your um, rotary cutters, ah, so it's sharper sharp than it was. Blade. Yes. <laughs> My other one was um, needing a new blade. So we just cut that out. I'm going to show you the, the swirl one here that's nice and easy. I'm also going to show you um, the, that one. Now, I've got to just update everyone. Morag, who emailed in the first show when we were talking about smells, was talking about, well, I was talking about smells. 
<laughs> Morag, Morag emailed in just to tell us that she was having a lovely morning, but she was waiting in for carpet fitters. And oh. I got into, so they're there. Um, Morag has said, yes, Stuart, you're right. The smell of new carpet is lovely. The cats are unsure. They don't like change. Oh, of course. It will they smell different for them. They don't like change, no. It Funny will smell, smell different. Oh, bless. But, oh, well, I'm glad they came, Morag, and you weren't having to wait in all day, although I, presumably <laughs> it'll take a little while. Although usually carpet fitters are like, it's like watching them and it's a film that's been sped up. I they know. So I fast. Know, I Unbelievable. know. Unbelievable. Right. Okay. What have you gone for? Have you gone for a nice, nice wool twist? Ooh. Have you gone for a berber? <laughs> a little axe minster? Love a bit of carpet. <laughs> I never bought into the hard flooring. Did you not? No, oh, I like okay. I like the car I like carpet. Yeah. I like carpet. Yeah. Okay, so um you to pull um to get the thread out of the skein. You actually hold at the um, where the label is, uh -huh. and you can pull the actual thread out. And because you've not knotted it at the bottom, it comes out very easily. Yeah, that's ever such a clever way of keeping your threads organised. And then you pull it the other way, and there's your thread. And you've still got your plait. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So top tip there. <laughs> um, the sashiko um, needles are long, and the reason why they're long is that with sashiko, you actually are passing the fabric onto the needle rather than the needle through the fabric. Oh, okay. Yes. So a long needle means that you can do a number of stitches all in one run, if you like. So um, the, the sashiko needles are really, really good. They've got a nice big eye there and they're a nice long length. And um, I'm going to actually show you the knotted method. And then so if there's single time, thread, not double. single thread. Mm -hmm. Um, and if there's time, I'll show you the other method that's used. And I'm going to start on this one. And I'm going to start at one end here and come along. And then you can jump small areas and you'll leave a longer loop on the back. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start on the right hand side. Uh, sorry, through from the wrong side. There's a tiny little, actually that one I'm going to do, that could be just a little French knot. I was wondering whether you might yes, do a French knot. Yes, I they, would do. I wonder what they're called in Japan. Presumably oh, they're I not don't called know. French knot. I'll, I'll start with a little French knot actually. Japanese knot. Mm. <laughs> so a little French knot, um, where your threads come through the fabric, you'll wrap your thread around the needle once, twice, maybe three times, depending on the size. I'm just going to go twice because the thread's nice and thick. And then go back down. And don't be tense with French knots. You mm -hmm. can let go of it. And then you just slide the thread down the needle until it forms a knot round the needle and your needle's gone back into the fabric. And then you pull it through. And there's your French knot. Fabulous. And then what you'll do is you'll follow the printing on the fabric. So mm -hmm. I'm going to... So this is one line, one stitch. Yeah, one line, one stitch. So it's a running stitch. So the length of your thread is determined by the printing on the fabric. And you'll see that I'm actually putting the fabric onto the needle. So my, my left hand, if, I'm, if you're right-handed like I am, is actually just folding the fabric mm -hmm. up and down across there so all the stitches are on the needle now when you've got a long length of thread just be careful when you're taking your needle through the fabric because it can tend to knot up so mm -hmm. you just take your time and be a bit patient so do a few stitches so that's a nice number of stitches that you've got make sure that the threads not twisted on the back mm -hmm. and then you'll pull your needle through and that pulls the thread. Oh, and look how suddenly through. that line really pops, doesn't it? And you don't want to, like a gathering stitch, you don't want to um, gather the fabric. Right. So you can see that the fabric sort of got ridges on there. Yeah. What you can do is you just run your finger and thumb and just flatten that. Okay. And make so sure that no it's not tension. tight, that you don't want yeah. any tension at right. all. So then we'll do another few stitches. So you can see how quickly it grows. Well, yeah. 
and how comfortable you can be just sat stitching. And don't worry if you don't follow and cover the lines exactly because you're going to be removing those printed lines. Ah, uh, okay, yep. So you do remove the lines yeah. with the warm water. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So so that's just taken two runs with the needle until you get to the end. And then we'll just pull well, that through. Of course you could take this one or two stitches at a time if you prefer that way. You can. You? you can do a single stitch at a time yeah. if you prefer, but it does tend to grow a lot quicker if you are able to do it like that. But if you've never done it before, I feel a bit apprehensive. Mm, mm. So you can again see that the fabric's sort of gathering up there. Yes. So I'm just going to move my finger and thumb along there. When you get to the end, you're going to um, just jump over slightly to the next start of the next row. Mm -hmm. And you're going to leave a bit of a loop on the back. Okay. Like that. Yep. And then you'll do your next line. So don't pull that up too tight. Then. No, no. It, it allows you that when you do come to um, rinse the fabric and get rid of the lines, mm -hmm. it means that you've got extra fabric there so that it doesn't gather up. Right. So, so that's one way of doing. And that's very, very simple on this particular one. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to start on one of the others so I can show you. And again, it looks so restful. Oh, it's lovely. And, you know, I mean, we do talk about mindful activities and calming activities a lot here. And it, a lot of it's, you know, a lot is talked about in the press and on TV about mindfulness activities. But sometimes it can be really difficult to step outside busy lives and, you know, and, and sometimes that project in itself can be another thing. Oh gosh, to get another like stressful. About. Yes, yes. Whereas a printed panel where the lines show you the stitches, where it's really focused on something very simple, very repetitive, that is a very, very relaxing. I think for most of us would find that very relaxing. It is. It's really, really relaxing. And the fact that it grows quite quickly as well, which is good. Um, so I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to not jump from the end of this line. I'm going to finish with a French knot at the end and I'm going to show you how you can finish your thread on oh, the back. Great. Okay, so. so have you done sashiko before you did these panels? Um, I've done sashiko for Sewing Quarter and Sewing Street. Okay. But when I first started, I'd never done it before. So I'm, I'm definitely not an expert. Susan Briscoe is the expert. Yes, and really I is. take my hat off to the lady. And we have, or we had, a beautiful book from Susan about mm. the history of it and about the different panels mm. and the different patterns. Um, my gosh, you know, she has got so much knowledge. But, uh, you know, the fact that I started and I've never done it before and I've been able to sort of carry on doing it, mm. you, you, you know, there are different projects I'd love to do, maybe, as you know, as you say, maybe a quilt or something with all oh, the, oh, gosh, with all the designs, a hand-stitched. So I've I got love the fact that there's a little sort of self-border around the design as well. Like on your cushion, yes. there's a little grey border around each motif. Yes, yes. So what I did, if you look at the um, actual panel here on the, the, the table, mm. what I did was when I have um, got rid of all the straight lines, you don't actually stitch the dotted line. The solid line is your point. stitching line. Mm -hmm. And that enables you to have that grey border ah, around gotcha. the outside. Gotcha. And also, um, I put some um, some of the uh, wadding, and then I just shadow quilt quilted around the edge oh, great, as just well. To make so them pop. yes, yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to do another French knot, and then I'll show you how to end your stitching. So that's your French knot there. I think I've gone round three times. Uh, try and be consistent. I, yeah. I went round twice on the first one and then just pull it through. Now all of the bundles are proving very, very popular. Don't forget that with each bundle, you're saving 10 pounds on the individual price. It's the best way to get the biggest saving.
but if you do want to buy the panels individually, you've got a particular color scheme you're going for or design, you can do that. Now, the one that's sending O2, let me find GO, yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, it's the code on our code. Uh, I've got 80. Is it this one here? Sashiko Coaster Part 1 in grey. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure I can actually. So this is OZYH80. But that's the brick. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the other one. Beg your pardon. M E Y H seven six. Okay, not a problem. Right, so you can buy these panels on their own. They're nineteen ninety nine. They should be nineteen ninety nine. But today we're crashing the price to sixteen ninety nine. Now, if you've already checked out, don't worry. You'll pay the final price. So this is if you want to buy, you know, an individual colour. Maybe you're going for all four designs, but you want them all in the brick red. So they'd be $16.99 each. The best price is to buy the bundle with one red, one grey together, and then you're saving £10. But you say so you're getting that panel that's got the six different designs printed on it, plus that strip, of course, don't forget that. And then you're also getting the same size of plain unprinted fabric. And presumably as well, in like Susan's books, you've got patterns that you could mark onto plain definitely, fabric. Definitely. So if you've already got um, a, a book on Sashiko, then rather than using this as the backing, you could always use this to do more designs on. You certainly can. And also, if you wanted to do a specific shape and fill it with Sashiko stitching, yes. you know, that, that book is wonderful for Ooh, doing yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, so I wanted to show how you finish off a thread. Mm -hmm. So I've done my line up, I've left a little loop there, and I've come all the way back. And rather than jump to the next row, which you can do, um, but I wanted to show you how you finished off. And the way I finish off is I take my needle under the stitch that's already done. So I'm going back on myself. And then I pass my needle through, and it goes through the loop and I create a knot on that back stitch. Yeah. So that's one way of doing it. The um, instructions ha have got very, very detailed instructions how um, you can do different starting and finishing. So um, I just wanted to show you this is an alternative method. So that's that one, and then I would tie a knot. The reason why I'm able to tie a knot is because I've used some wadding on my coasters so any knots or anything like that are sunk into the actual wadding ah, so I was going to ask you about yeah that. so you put yep. some wadding yes yes some of the cotton one which yep. is really really nice yep. so um and then you'll start again so you'll start from this end and do your french knot and then follow the stitching all the way around right so what i wanted to do was show you this looks like hieroglyphics <laughs> Um, and this is actually showing you this particular pattern here. And, you know, my normal response would be, oh, right, I'll do one. But you actually follow, and if you can see my needle and my thread there, you'll start here, and I will do some stitching. You'll do that curve there. You'll come to the center of this flower, and then you'll carry on and carry on and carry on. So that will be one line of stitching. Yeah. Another line of stitching would be there, across there, across there, and across there. Then another line of stitching would be there, there, and round. Yes. So you're actually just following the shape, but you're doing... I think the, the main reason I could 
see on this one where I didn't do it in lines and it actually pulls, or is it on this one? It pulls the stitches out of shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe this one. I think this one here, I did sort of like lines and tried to do it like that and it didn't work. It works when you do the horizontal lines like that. Understood. Now this is the details on screen for the bundle that Car is using. So that's the GO1 Sashiko and Hitomi Sashi coaster bundle. So that's uh, six of the grey, six designs on the grey fabric and six, same six designs on the brick red fabric. And that's that design that you've got there. As I say, these ones I think would be make beautiful Christmas presents because of the colours. Yeah, they are. They work really, really well. Um, again, earlier you were saying about where stitches um, go over each other. What you don't want to do is go down or at any of that cross. Right. So you're going to go down just before that line crosses. Just move that needle again. Then you go underneath and then in the stitch again. You've got another one where the line crosses. You go down. And this is all explained just in this section here. Yeah, they're good comprehensive instructions, yes, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you'll just get into the habit and the, the rhythm of doing it. I think that's the thing. And uh, as I say, once you do understand that you want to do a, as long a line as possible yeah. and not go back on yourself and not cross yourself. And if you look at the back, I'll show you another one if we've got time. Right, I know we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, so that's it's what I'm going to do. Left, yeah, that's yep. what I'm going to do. Okay, so for example, this is another one. Um, this is from a different panel. This is from this panel. Um, oh here. gosh, no, I would not have thought of stitching it like no, that at all. No, no, no. And can I show you on the back? Mm. That's how it is. Oh, interesting. So that's your line. Yeah. And then you can go across, come back, um, or you go up there, across, and back down again. So, for example, on the cushion, um, which one was it? I think it was this one. It was this one. Um, so you do over, under, over, under, all the way across. Mm -hmm. And then you come back, over, under, over, under, all the way across. And, you know, I thought, this isn't going to work. It's never going to join up. No, but you do all your horizontal lines like that, and then you do your vertical lines. Oh, interesting. And yeah. then you're left with that. Mate, it is such a beautiful design. That panel, actually, that you need to make the cushion that Cara is holding now is on screen. So you're getting the grey bundle and you're also getting the brick red bundle. So actually you would have enough fabric or enough panels to make three cushions like this because you've got 12 squares in total. You could do a gray cushion, you could do a brick red cushion, and you could do one that combined the two. Yes, so two you could have two, two of the brick reds yep. and two of the grays. Absolutely wonderful. You've really inspired me to do Sashiko, Cara, good, good. and I'm sure a lot of you at home have been inspired as well. Thank you for your company. No problem, no problem at all. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank Thanks you very for much. demystifying Sashiko. <laughs> Love enjoy, it. enjoy. Now, let's just have a quick look at those um, panels that are available individually. So now this is the one that Cara was using for her cushion in the grey. Now this is available on its own. Just going to open it out and it's also available in this bundle so here's the bundle 29.98 you're getting this design you're also getting the same design in the brick red and don't forget you also get a piece of plain fabric the same size as well plus your full instructions and the reds here as well do you want me to get the red out Okay, so you're getting the red, so you're getting the printed panel and the backing fabric as well. Exactly the same designs. Now then, separately you can also get them. So this one in the grey, M-E-Y-H-7-6. So that price will crash from 1999 to 16.99. Here it is. 
We've got gremlins in the studio today. <laughs> Everything's working a little bit slowly. There we go, $16.99. Remember, the best saving is to buy both panels together in that bundle where you save um, £10. But even here, you're saving £3 per panel. Okay, so $16.99. That's the grey Geo One. And that's the one that Kari used for her beautiful, beautiful cushion using four out of the six square panels. And then you've got the red version. That's code... Uh, OZYH80. And that's for the same designs, but this time it's in that beautiful brick red colour. So that's this colour right here. So same designs. And it is really lovely. If you've bought any of the Japanese fabric packs that we have from. Who do we have who brings those lovely. Beth, love Beth, uh, they would fit beautifully. It's the same brick red. It's a really traditional colour for Japanese textiles. Now, we've also got another bundle I'm going to show you. Sure. Um, right here. So the grey one is WJYH14. Oh, sorry, whole bundle, beg your pardon. So for the whole bundle, you're getting the grey and the brick red. I'm going to open this up so you can see the designs. So it's got a little bit of an animal theme to this one. You've got the cat, you've got the rabbit family and the dragonflies. And then you've also got some beautiful floral designs here. And I love the fact that each of these designs, all six of them, have a circle and a border or a background. So you're getting the red, you're also getting those same designs in the grey as well. Now if you want each of them separately, you absolutely can do that. So the red one, uh, I think the red one is S-O-Y-H-5-3? No, sorry, W-J-Y-H-1-4, that's the brick red. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So they're all going down to $16.99, the single panels. And remember, you get that panel that's all printed, plus you get the backing fabric as well. Lots of you are checking out now. So while you do that, we're going to go to a little break. I will see you back in just a few minutes. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harborough. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try. There's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes. It's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. 
you know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! sewing street or yarn lane customer no matter how many times you check out in one day you will only pay one postage and packaging so don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out you will only pay one pmp even if you check out multiple times in one day if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi there, welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's wonderful to have your company today. We've been all over rainbows to Japan with Sashiko. We've had such a great morning, but you know, it all comes back to the sewing machine for me every time. The, my sewing journey, my sewing experience changed completely the day I went on a sewing machine for the very first time and suddenly the fun, the possibilities of sewing by machine were opened up to me and I was just blown away and I was hooked for life. Now what we've got in today's hour is a look at some really fantastic sewing machines at a variety of different price points. So we've got that machine that's amazing for your beginning sewing machine that's going to last you for years. But we've also got right up to those machines that actually start to step into professional level. Um, so we've got everything. We've also got some great bags. We've also got some terrific tools that are really on every quilt or every sewer's list of essentials. So a great hour to stay with us while we look at these essential tools. Now right in front of me I've got the Experience 450 from Elna. Now this is a terrific, terrific machine and this is what I'm talking about starting your sewing journey the right way with the right tools. Now, the Elna machine that I've got right here, the 450 sewing machine, is £299, which is an amazing price to start with. Uh, but it's also, it's £20 saving, right, to start with. You've also got four interest-free split payments of £74.75 each. Um, really, really affordable way to get on board with Elna sewing machines. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown on this machine, but it would make an absolutely perfect Christmas present, I think. Uh, if someone in your family has been really inspired by watching Sewing Street, maybe they really got into the sewing bee and wanted to start making clothes, or wanted to start making patchwork quilts, or home decor or all of those things bag making a brilliant brilliant place to start now remember that when you pay using our split pay option you only have to make the first payment plus your postage and packing um, and you'll get the machine sent out to you you don't have to pay all four of them before you receive your goods so if you're buying this as a Christmas present or you're buying this as a present for now um, this will be sent out from Elna 
uh, over the next few days. It will come direct to you from them and you'll have the machine and you can plug it in and you can start sewing uh, right up to Christmas and beyond. Uh, brilliant machine this. I'm going to go through the features with you because it's really important to talk about what you get with the machine. What are its capabilities? What feet? What stitches? So let's start with the standard accessories that you get with your machine. Now you're getting your standard foot A and you're going to use that for the vast majority of utility stitches. You're going to get a zipper foot. So that's great for putting in zips both regular and invisible. Uh, also great for doing things like putting piping or inserts. And then you're getting the satin stitch foot. You're going to use that for a lot of decorative stitches. You've got your sliding buttonhole foot. Super important. These days I won't even look at a machine that doesn't have an automatic buttonhole. Uh, bobbins, of course, seam ripper, needle set, spool holders and your spool pin. Uh, you've also got your screwdriver, lint brush, foot controller and a soft cover. Now it's good to know that if there are extra feet that you would like for your Elna machine, you can of course buy those. You can get those machine, uh, th those feet uh, to add on. But what you've got there is that really good basic start and it makes it at such an affordable price. £299 uh, is all you'll pay. Uh, you've, I mean, still with those feet that you're getting, your your basic uh, utility foot, your satin stitch or embroidery stitch foot, your zipper foot and your buttonhole foot, you are covering most of the bases of sewing that you're going to do. But for example, if you wanted a gathering foot for your for your machine, you can buy that as a separate foot. Now then, let's also look at the functions. It's a computerized sewing machine. You've got your you've got 30 stitches that go up to five millimeters wide. Now those 30 stitches we'll look at in a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, you've got a free arm. So things like making bags, sewing sleeves on, sewing cuffs, turning up trousers, easy peasy. You've got your horizontal rotary hook, your top loading bobbin, uh, built-in automatic needle threader, easy access function buttons, LCD screen, LED lighting and a sewing speed of up to 820 stitches per minute. So fast, powerful and adaptable. Now we'll have a little look at the stitches that are on the front there and you can just see them, they're all displayed right here. Now I'll be honest with you, um, a lot of these functions in the past have very much been on higher end machines. Things like having a sliding speed control, um, automatic needle up and down, locking function, reverse stitching. To get all of those things on a machine for under £300 is just absolutely fantastic. And um, you know the relative price of sewing machines has really come down over, year, over the years and the functionality has really, really gone up. You get a lot more sewing machine for your money these days than you did 20 or 30 years ago. Now, stitch wise, you've got your basic straight stitch. You're going to use that for the majority of your sewing. You've got a triple straight stitch, a lightning stitch. So if you want to sew things like jersey, knit fabrics, stretch fabrics, not a problem. You've got your zigzags, you've got overlocking or over edge stitch uh, function as well. Uh, invisible hem, blind hem. Um, you've also got things like your buttonhole, you've got a blanket stitch, a couple of those blanket stitches. And then you've got a few embroidery stitches as well, which are really nice for putting little decorative features on. But the majority of your stitches here is all about utility, it's all about that construction. So if you're doing dressmaking, home decor or patchwork and quilting, uh, you've got all of those functions on this very affordable machine, the Elna 450EX. Love that machine, it's a great way in. Great way in. Also terrific, actually, if you want a second machine for going to workshops and classes, if you want something to take. Nice and portable. Nice and portable. It's a decent weight. Don't get me wrong, it's not lightweight, but it's a decent weight for carrying to and from the car or in and out of a building. Or if you don't have a dedicated sewing room and you're a bit of a movable feast, it's nice to have a machine that's easy to transport. 
really, really well respected name, Elna. I've had my Elna 684, oh gosh now, six or seven years, I think, the original Elna 680, and um, still going strong. It's a great machine, really solid build. You get a two year warranty with your machine, which is great to know, to have that peace of mind. And great customer service as well, of course. It's UK based. Now don't forget, when you buy a sewing machine from Sewing Street, we don't charge extra postage because of the weight. Eight, nine, 10 kilograms of weight. Uh, you still pay your 395 postage. And if you've already bought something in one of today's shows, you've already paid your postage, nothing extra to pay from this, even though it's coming direct from Elna. <coughs> now, it could take up to 10 days, and it certainly is gonna come as a different parcel to anything you've bought from Sewing Street today or any other day. But the sewing machines are all in the UK. Important message that. Um, there's quite a lot of supply issues at the moment, especially with anything that's being imported. So what we make sure is that the sewing machines that we're selling on air are already in, in Elna's warehouse in the UK, ready to send out. So as soon as you order, as soon as you check out, your order will be sent over to Elna and they will crack on with processing your order. Now, one little top tip that I'm gonna offer up is when you buy your machine, your 450 or any of the machines we've got here at Sewing Street, go to the website, to the Elna website, and download the manual to your tablet, to your computer, however you like to download. You will get a paper um, manual with your machine, but if it takes four days, five days, nine days to arrive, it's up to 10 days delivery, um, but you could be reading the manual at home on your tablet before your machine arrives. And that way, when your machine arrives, you can hit the ground running. Because <laughs> if I know anything, it's that when we get uh, some new tool, piece of equipment, sewing machine, we want to jump straight on it and be able to sew. If you're buying this for someone who's never sewn before, it is really, really easy to set up and get running. Really, really easy. Now, let's have a little look at a price comparison. Remember, you are getting a £20 savings. So there on So Essential, we've got the Elna 450 computerized sewing machine for £319. Uh, we're giving you £20 off, it's £299, and we're also giving you the option of four split pays, £74.75 each. So literally, you just have to make the first payment, plus your PMP, and we will process your order, and you'll be sent out your Elna sewing machine. You can get cracking straight on it. Or if it's a gift for someone, let them start their journey. Will you make them wait until Christmas Day? Will you let them have it early? <laughs> I'm definitely on the early side. I could not bear to have to wait until Christmas Day. Plus, Christmas Day is kind of busy, isn't it? You know, there's lots of other stuff going on. And I would hate to just have to say to all of my guests and family, I'm really sorry, but if you need me, I'll be in my sewing room. Shout me when dinner's ready. It's kind of my dream. Although I do love spending time with family, of course. Now then, if you're buying a sewing machine, if you've got a sewing machine, you might well like what I'm gonna show you next, which is a fantastic sewing machine bag. Now this is a really nice, robust sewing machine bag. And everything I'm gonna show you is under 20 pounds. So very affordable very giftable too. So if you want to buy a gift for a sewer in your family or a friend and you've got a £20 budget or less, uh, got some great buys for you. So what we've got first of all, I've just opened it up because I want to start off. The base is really solid, 
really strong solid base there in the bottom of your bag okay and i'm just going to flip it over so you can see you've also got these four really good chunky feet so if you're taking your sewing machine say for example to a class and you're going on the bus and you're waiting and you put it down outside it's really good to know that you've got that strong base but also those feet that are going to keep it from sitting right on the ground then you've got this absolutely huge space inside i'm just going to show you so this is our first machine that we looked at um, that fits in really easily and there is extra space in there as well really strong double zip and also kind of what i like to think of as finger savers to hold those handles together so that when you're taking that to your class you've also got that smashing really big pocket on the front for putting things like cables your um, foot pedal the manual always always please speaking as a teacher now always take the manual to classes because if something goes wrong you know you've you've set the memory and you can't or you can't remember how to set the memory and you ask the teacher we do our best but we don't know every machine inside out so if you've got your manual with you we can put our heads together and we can usually solve every problem. Now, a little price comparison for you. It's not a direct price comparison, but it's giving you an idea of how much you could pay for a sewing machine bag. $32.99, and that's with money off. Should be $41.99. Sewing machine bags are expensive because they have to be really heavy duty to do the job. So that's terrific and also I'm just going to show you as well just from a quality point of view look inside all of the seams are actually bound they're all bound seams so that's terrific isn't it for under 20 pounds and a great color now then I've got even keener prices this one proved very very popular when we had it on before this is $15.99, but it is limited stock. In fact, it's pretty limited stock on all our sewing machine bags. Hmm. So this, again, same kind of size here. Absolutely terrific size. I'm just wondering in terms of size-wise whether our 580... I'm just going to check... Let's see, 680 fits, yeah, I know that feeling, I'm just going to have a look and see whether that will fit, yeah, there we go, there we go, right, so that was, just remind me, what was that machine? Was that the 680? 580. That was the 580. That was the 580. So that's gone in there absolutely beautifully. And we've still got, of course, that big pocket at the front for manual, foot pedal, power cable as well. Or you could put things like fat quarters in there and your scissors, bits and pieces like that, and put the cable inside the bag. So that's great to know, isn't it? Even a big machine like the 580, or the 680, I think, would go in there. A little message we've got through. Thank you. Love this bag. I keep my overlocker in this and spare threads and pedal from Collector in Merseyside. That brilliant point that actually, you know, it's not just for sewing machines. You can put your overlockers in them. If you've got something like the Aki Quilt Go Big, that would fit really nicely in there. Or the Go Cutter, some dies, your um, cutting mats as well, you could fit in there. This is also great for storage. So at home, you know, lots of us, um, have a sewing machine at home but we don't have a dedicated sewing room and we need to be able to keep our machine dust free out of bright sunlight and extremes of temperature as well we want to keep it safe and secure so in a bag for under 16 pounds absolutely fantastic blow me out the water Hannah go on the red 
the red. Okay, blow me out the water. Go on, hit me. Twelve ninety nine. My goodness. Are we just going to stop at ninety nine pence? It's just a zip. There is a limit. Absolutely fab. Now, is that the same size as the previous two bags? Same capacity. Exactly the same capacity. So we could still get our 580, our Elna 580 in there. Gorgeous, bright red. Again, those chunky feet on the bottom. And nice hard base as well. Just going to keep everything safe and secure. And of course, another really big pocket on the front for manual foot pedal, cables. If you've got a knee lift as well, it could well go in there as well, depending on the size of it. But also you might buy one of these bags as fabric storage or for your other tools, your die cutting tools. You might use this to keep things like rulers. Maybe you've got a Moxie long arm quilting machine and you want a bag for things like your bobbin winder, your wavy rulers, your extra feet, your micro stippling feet, uh, they can all go in this bag instead. Use it how you will. Lots of you are doing exactly that and checking out your baskets. Brilliant, brilliant buy that. Let's have a look at the other end of the scale in terms of sewing machines, let's look at something which is verging on going pro. Now this is the Elna Excellence 720 Pro sewing machine, which I've got right in front of me. I'm just gonna bring that box down. This is really super popular with a lot of our bag makers and also a lot of our makers who do a lot of things like curtains and blinds maybe dressmaking as well. Um, it's a really, really powerful and heavier weight machine. Um, this is not, whew, yeah, this is a two hand job. This is all metal. This is all metal. Oh gosh, yeah, that is definitely, it's a pro. It's a complete aluminium frame. We're going to have a look at some technical features. So let's go through these. So a body construction to start off with is an aluminium frame. So it's got that weight, that stability, that's going to give you a really sort of sturdy build, really professional finish. The machine size itself, it's 516 millimetres wide, 300 millimetres tall, and a depth of 220 millimetres. The sewing space, the um, harp, if you like, is 255 by 120 millimetres. It's got a flat bed. It doesn't have a free arm, so keep this in mind. Now, for things like bag making, this is not an issue. You can still sew around the top of a bag. You just do it the other way up. Rather than having it around the free arm, you have it up rather than down. You've got an LCD screen. Nice size on that as well, nice and visible. A horizontal full rotary hook with transparent bobbin cover, so you've still got that top loading bobbin. An auto declutch bobbin winder with independent motor, so um, you're not going to be running your sewing machine while you wind a bobbin. Uh, then you've got a superior needle threader, which we absolutely need. A retractable feed dog, so you can free motion drop feed sensor and then bright built-in white LED lamps three different locations so you've got a really well lit area for working so if you're a late night sewer early morning sewer uh, great now you've also got all sorts of other features there but you've also it does yeah it does come with an extension table which you can see there so, I mean, obviously, if you're doing something like bag making um, at quite a professional level, then that is really, really useful, extremely useful. And it's built much more like an industrial sewing machine than a home use. So there may be some elements of it that look a little bit different to you, especially sort of around this area. 
but these are much more like sewing machines sort of used to be. Uh, nothing to, to be afraid of. Still really, really straightforward. It's still a computerized sewing machine too, of course. So you're getting 200 stitches, including nine buttonholes, a really wide sewing space. This would be great for quilting if you're free motion quilting. A flat bed, it does not have a free arm, but you can free motion stitch, two different things. LCD screen, LED lights, remember in three locations, so a really brightly lit area. An independent bobbin winder, extra high presser foot position for doing thick layers, a one step needle plate converter, upper feed system by Elna, and you're getting an extension table. You do also get, with your uh, 720 Pro sewing machine, you get a knee lifter. <coughs> Excuse me. You get your knee lift. Uh, these, I wouldn't be without my knee lift. I use it all the time for, um, so what you use this for, it sort of hangs below the table. It's connected to the front of the machine hangs below the table and you have your knee, the side of your knee resting against this bar and then when you want to lift or lower the press of foot you just push with your knee, you push that away from yourself and as you push it away the press of foot lifts up and then as you bring your knee back down the press of foot is lowered. So it means that if you're turning corners a lot, if you're quilting and you're changing directions or you want to stop and readjust, you're not constantly taking your hand off the to lift and lower the presser foot. It's all done with your knee, so your two hands can stay here. So they stay there, you lift the presser foot, you reposition, the presser foot goes back down and then you're sewing again and your hands have never left the spot. It's also brilliant if you're doing things like applique because to get applique, machine applique, really good round the edge, you need to make little adjustments, little and often. Same with free motion machine quilting. You're making little adjustments all the time. Having a knee lift is such a boon. I can't emphasize it enough. Uh, also, you're getting this really wide foot pedal, which means that if you want to use both feet, swap feet, um, it, great for that. Um, that's a terrific feature. Now let's have a look at the accessories because they are very, very extensive. Um, standard foot, rolled hem, zipper foot, satin stitch foot, an open toed satin stitch foot, in great for foundation paper piecing that. Blind hem foot, overlock foot, so we can dispense with that overlock to quite an extent. If you've got a machine like this, you can really neaten your seams very well. A quarter inch foot for patchwork, a darning foot for free motion, free motion quilting foot that's convertible, it's got three different heads. They're brilliant. It's what you get on the 680. Absolutely terrific. Uh, you get an automatic buttonhole foot, button sewing foot, upper feed foot holder. Uh, you're getting a professional quarter inch foot, needle plate, extra needle plate, straight stitch needle plate, quilting guide bar, button shank plate, five bobbin, bobbins, a seam ripper, bobbins, bobbin, bop it. Seam ripper, needle set, limp brush, spool holders, small, medium, small, large, and special. Uh, two spool rest. What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Two spool nets for difficult threads. Uh, screwdriver, an accessory box, a knee lifter, an extension table, a large foot controller. You get an instructional DVD that will play in a computer, presumably as well, and a soft cover. Now then, let me just show you the accessory box, because, yeah, no, it all comes in this box, doesn't it? Oh, and is that, that's um, like a, that's your walking foot, isn't it? Yeah, mm, I was going to say, that's great. So you're getting a, wa a walking foot, or, or a foot that does the same job as a walking foot, but this actually like sort of clips on to the shank, um, it's great, fab that you're getting that as well. I was going to say, I, I didn't think you've got a walking foot, but you do. Uh, darning foot, and then you've got this darning foot, which has got different attachments that will go on it. Absolutely terrific. I love this box. I think that's absolutely fantastic. 
we can swap our needle plates as well oh a message from avril i've got an excellent 720 had it for years it's a true workhorse i've quilted 108 inch square quilts on it avril absolutely brilliant i couldn't have said it better myself they are real workhorses it's not called pro for, for fun it is you know all metal construction a really solid machine fantastic for quilters you've got that extra space in the harp it is absolutely superb isn't it that big extension table that knee lifter we actually did a search earlier on to try and find the pro anywhere else can't find it anywhere else what you'll find is it says pro and then when you click on it it's actually a different machine it's not this machine at all it's not the excellent 720 pro we haven't found it anywhere else so if you want to take your sewing to the next level and you're actually starting to think about you know making bags that you're selling maybe you've got a store online maybe you go and do things like craft and artists markets maybe you've spent years making patchwork quilt and struggled on a smaller domestic sewing machine and you want something that's more powerful got a bigger throat space that just gives you more possibilities maybe you've just decided that 2022 is the year that you're going to take your sewing to another level and you want to get yourself a machine which is kind of semi-industrial that's that's a different kind of build to a domestic sewing machine that's going to give you that robustness and i think particularly for things like bag making and quilt making if you're really doing a lot of it it's really a great machine to have a look at love it now then let's grab another of our absolute favorites here at sewing street which is the elna 580 there we go terrific machine now um i remember back to my very first weekend here at sewing street when the elna 680 came back into stock and um, uh, so many of you had waited so long for the 680. Uh, the 580 is, a, in fact, a very, very similar machine. You're getting an, a huge number of features there that you're getting on the 680. So it's really worth having a look because we don't have the 680 in stock now. Uh, also, the 680 is around about £1,100 which might well take it out of your price point. And you might well be wondering, well, what is within my price point? I've got about 800 pounds to spend. What will I get for that? Well, elsewhere, less than you're going to get here at Sewing Street. But here at Sewing Street, you can get the Elna 580 plus for 789 pound. And you can have it in um, split pays, three of them at 263 pounds. You only have to pay the first one to get the machine home. Now the 580 plus from Elna, a terrific, terrific machine. We'll have a little look at some of the features that you're getting on it. Now, remember you are getting exactly the same deal in terms of postage. So 395, um, if you've bought something else today, it could have been a bundle of sashiko thread. Uh, you're still only going to pay that one PMP. You don't have to pay anything extra to get your 580 plus sewing machine from Elna home. Now, lots and lots of fantastic features on this machine, many of which you will recognise from the 680. You're getting 120 stitches, and that includes seven buttonholes. So whether you want to sew stretch fabrics, plain cottons, or a really thick wool winter coat, you've got a buttonhole that's going to be suitable. Uh, you've got a fantastic space, uh, 210 by 120 mil high space, um, in the uh, harp of your machine. That's exactly the same size as the 680, exactly the same throat space. 
you've got a built-in superior needle threader, easy guided bobbin threader with built-in thread cutter two, auto declutch and easy bobbin winder with built-in thread cutters, automatic and programmable thread cutter. Again, these are features that we normally see in machines that are a thousand pounds plus. Uh, you're getting a great bundle of feet included as well that really are going to cover most of the bases. Now, one of the differences between the 580 and the 680 is the quilters bundle in terms of feet. So with the 680, you get the um, free motion quilting foot and a walking foot included. Now, you don't get those included with the 580. However, you do still get quarter inch foot and you get your patchwork stitches. If you were to then go onto the Elna website or another website and buy the darning foot and the walking foot for this machine, you're looking at a combined price of around about 70 to 75 pounds for those two additional feet. That still takes the price of the 580 to around about 850 pounds, which is still significantly less than the 680. But you've still got the same throat space and you will then have your darning foot, walking foot and all those other stitches. So it's really, really easy to kind of upgrade the 580 to make it a complete quilters package. But you are getting loads of fantastic feet with this machine. Let's have a little look at them. You're getting your standard foot, which is on the machine, your over edge foot for neatening, basically doing the same sort of job of neatening as an overlocker would without the cutting function. You get a rolled hem foot, zipper foot, a satin stitch or embroidery foot, an open toed satin stitch foot, a blind hem foot and a quarter inch seam allowance foot. You get your automatic buttonhole foot included as well, which again is so important. You get a pivot pin for sewing circles, a quilting guide bar, bobbins, seam ripper, needles, lint brush, spool holders, spool pins, your screwdriver, you know, all those good stuff that you would expect to get. You're also getting an extra wide extension table, so you still get that. You get your foot controller, but you can also sew on this machine without the foot controller and use one touch uh, on the front of the machine. And you're also getting a semi-hard cover as well. So you're actually getting a huge amount of functionality, a huge number of stitches, 120 stitches, seven automatic one-step buttonholes. There are the stitches right up there on the top of the machine. So they're nice and handy. Very, very easy to program this machine. Very easy to select your stitch, your width, your length adjustment. You've got two alphabets here. And then also another little function which I love on the front is you've got these little handy pockets, storage pockets for your utility feet. So these are the ones that you're going to go to mostly. Now, of course, down the bottom of the machine, you have also got your accessory box. And in there, you'll store things like your bobbins and seam ripper and also things like your buttonhole foot. But also, if you buy any additional feet, um, they can also go inside there. So you can see there we've got various different pieces. Or you can just take all of those out and fill that up with sweeties, which is what I do mostly. So nice and neat. This, of course, does come off. Oops, I'll just pull it out of the way. I have other sewing machines on the table. <laughs> so there you've got your free arm. So when you're wanting to do things like turn up trousers, add sleeves to a shirt or blouse, add the cuffs, then you're going to use your um, free arm. But it's a great build. You've got a fantastic partner there in Elna. Um, a great customer service, UK-based customer service. Again, a two-year warranty with this machine. And great manual. Again, if you're going for the 580 plus, I would download the um, instruction manual so that you can read it and absorb it. Or if you're unsure and you're wondering if this is the right machine for you, then do a bit of research. Download the manual and have a read. Do a bit of 
price comparison as well. See what's out there. Remember, this is the 580 Plus. Uh, you're getting a fantastic machine, a fantastic deal, and three split pays, if you'd like them, of £263. One of those split pays will get the machine home to you. I'll just show you as well, before we move on, the semi-rigid cover that you get looks like this. Again, it's exactly the same cover that you get with the 680, so you've got kind of rigid bars that hold it nice and firm, pockets in the front, you can carry your machine like this, or when it's just being stored, seal it all up. Also, on the back, you've also got another pocket there where you can store things like your knee lift, your extension table and your manual as well. So it's a really useful cover. Now then, of course, we've got all sorts of other tools on the show. Really worth having a look at. Oh, now then. Hefty. <laughs> Not just me. Sewing machine trolley bag. This is really superb. £54.99. That's an amazing price for such a great bit of kit. You've got your telescopic handle here, of course, that you can raise and lower depending on how you, There you go. Really sturdy wheels on the bottom. Like mini tractor wheels. And then a great, fantastic, big bag uh, inside there that's got loads of different handles, actually. It's got a handle like this front and back. It's got a handle on the top as well. Then it's also got handles at either end as well. So however you want to lift your sewing machine, or even if you've gone for a really big, heavy one. Um, and also, you can take the trolley off the wheels if you want to just be able to carry the bag as it is. Um, you've got a massive space inside there. I'm just going to open the top so you can see. Now, its dimensions are in centimetres. 24 centimetres by 47 by 42. I'm just going to lay that down a second. Just pushing the base into place just so you can see. But I mean, an absolutely huge capacity in there and everything's really really thickly padded i mean you can see how thick that padding in it is all the way around including the base as well so your precious sewing machine is going to be nicely protected in there and there it is now let me just give you the internal measurements of the trolley 35 by 41 by 18. But they're all on the description on the website if you want to go and have a closer look at that. I'm just going to leave that trolley bag there. Now don't forget, even though it's a really large item, you're only paying the same postage. It doesn't matter whether you buy a reel of thread or a sewing machine or a trolley bag, you're still only going to pay $3.95. You only pay that once each day, um, no matter how many purchases you make, no matter how many times you check out your basket either. So don't worry if you've already checked out your basket today. You can still put that trolley bag into your basket and check out. You won't pay another P&P. OK, let's have a look at a few more things. The morning has run away with us. So for any patchwork and quilter, they're also very, very popular with dressmakers, rotary cutters. And this is a rotary blade sharpener. So let me just move that over so you can have a proper look. So what you're getting there is your rotary blade sharpener. And you can sharpen 45 mil and 28 mil. Okay, so it works like an old fashioned knife sharpener. Yep. So you put your blade inside and then twist it, roll it round. Oh, OK, 
okay, roll it back and forth like that. Oh, so you put your blade inside. Oh, you can get these, can't you, for doing for like doing press ups. <laughs> Having a little bit of a workout here. Mm. There you go. Well, if you're that person <laughs> who always has the non-sharpened blade, who always struggles um, at cutting, you've always got threads that aren't quite cut, um, but you don't want to have to keep on buying blades, you can sharpen them using your rotary blade sharpener. That's $12.99. That might be a nice little Christmas present to yourself so that you'll always have a sharp blade. May your rotary blade always be sharp. That is actually what they say. Fab. Mm. Yeah, that little thing there, I, I couldn't work out what it was, but it's actually for picking up the blade. So you don't have to touch the blade, it's magnetic. You can see it there. I thought it was like a little puppy tail or something. Um, you pick the blade up with that and put it in so you don't have to touch the blade itself. What a great safety feature. That's ever so clever. Mm. Now then, we have a few other things to look at. Mm. Muslin slash cheesecloth. You don't have to be making cheese to buy this. You really? Okay, I've got to share this with you. Hannah, our producer, just said she makes her own hair gel. She makes her own hair gel. So you boil linseeds and they produce a hair gel that's 100% natural. And then you strain it through cheesecloth. Oh my goodness, how interesting. Well, I, yeah. I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm in awe. What can I say? What can I say? I was thinking about different ways you could use it uh, in craft. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so that's the muslin or cheesecloth. You're getting 2.74 metres by 0 0.91 metre. So it's a lot of muslin or cheesecloth in there. So you might be using this actually for, for cookery. You might be using this at home for cooking with. That would be fine. I would always scold it with boiling water first uh, just to clean it. But um, yeah, but also has lots of applications for crafting. If you do things like, um, you know, like the scented hearts, your little fragranced um, padded things, put your potpourri or scented things inside a bag made of muslin and then pop that inside. Uh, yep, yeah, that's one use for it. And also for straining homemade hair gel. Thanks for that, Hannah. Useful. I'm not, yeah. Any, you just, yeah. I'm just in awe. Um, Hannah, you don't need to show me later because believe it or not, my need for hair gel is probably less than yours. Right. What are we going to do? We've got 90 seconds. We've got tomorrow's menu. Let's do that. John will be here tomorrow presenting. Now then, at 8 a.m., it's Marvellous Moda. And then at 9 a.m., it's the Tim Holtz Alchemy Quilt with Stuart Hillard. I've heard he's lovely. At 10 a.m., it's Quilting Tools and Supplies. And then at 11 a.m., we've got the William Morris Woven Quilt with Stuart Hillard. And then at 12, it's Yarn Lane in vogue with Sam Sabido. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing her. We got on like a house on fire last time she was in with her amazing crochet projects. So yeah, I'm guesting tomorrow two fantastic quilts, the Alchemy and also the William Morris Woven. So kind of different ends of the spectrum really, but both beautiful. So I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll be with you at nine o'clock, but John will be here, of course, at eight o'clock. So join him and join me tomorrow here on Sewing Street.